Okay, we're live. Welcome, my friends. And uh, I often wonder what the delay is between the time that I press the button and how much buffer is there in the video. So welcome, my friends. And I'm just going to announce something here at the beginning. The internet is very unstable right now. If you're home, you know this. You know everyone is at home doing live streaming and so on. And it's very hard to live stream because I'm watching my, that's why I have to keep an eye on the computer here. I'm watching the uh, bit rate and I can see that it uh, drops like, you know, very suddenly and then suddenly I lose you. So I don't know how long we can keep it going without uh, any kind of interruption. And if, it, if we get interrupted, I'm going to just reboot and then we'll see if we can get back on if it's possible, okay? So again, thank you. And uh, let me just uh, acknowledge here entire Meyer AMG, Jellyfish, Sinistos, Iron Fist, Vic, Mike Simone. And let me just uh, set up my remote device here so I don't have to look down. Got so many things to look at, including your comments here, just to keep a live stream going. So live streams are uh, kind of a pain. They're like a bit more work. What upload speed do you need to be able to stream? Um, <clears throat> it's it's not, you know, you could stream even at 10 uh, megabits per second, but it has to be consistent. If it drops even a little bit, then it'll stop. So, so uh, in theory, my bit rate, my uh, speed is supposed to be you know, close to 100, and, you know, right nowadays, it's, you're lucky to get 10. So it's very, very bad, but that's not really the problem. The connection actually drops. So in, in a uh, typical day, I can see, you know, my modem disconnect easily 100 times a day. Yes, I know Van, but, you know, I, you, you they don't know that. Vic Zart is written right there. So anyway, so uh, that's uh, that's uh, some of the concern. And and uh, and the other thing is, someone was telling me that you leave comments, and then I can't really react to the comments because of the delay in the way YouTube does it. In YouTube, when you put a comment in, I don't see it for quite a bit here, or you don't see my response because the video is like thirty seconds behind. So, uh, given that, we just have to uh, kind of keep keep it going the best we can, and you know, I'll try to. I'm trying to actually answer questions that, that have been asked of me before. So uh, I was already asked this, these questions uh, during the week, and I'm going to try to answer it here because they're kind of difficult to answer. Do you have business class internet? This is a house, Iron Fist. Can I get a business class internet in a house? Back in the old days, you could. Uh, tracking pixels are called a beacon. Okay, so let me tell you what the topic is tonight. I can't really title it in a clear way because it wouldn't fit. So what I'm really going to talk about is the fact that I have a lot of stuff to, to tell you about cookies, finger browser fingerprinting, uh, Proton Mail, Tor, this, that, and all these different uh, VPNs, and all of these uh, different things that you use for privacy, and how my advice is different than others. So I'm going to actually uh, make an example here. There's somebody on YouTube called The Hated One. And he has, I think, like a million subscribers. So he's very popular on YouTube. And, you know, I think he started about the same time I did on Periscope. So I've been on Periscope about the same time five years ago. I'm new to YouTube, guys. So if you're, if you, you know, you think uh, I have a measly uh, 12 point, close to 12.5 subscriber, 12.5 K then you know i'm i'm a no one a nobody against somebody like uh the hated one with a million uh forget that that's that's bs okay 
So what I'm going to tell you is that people have told me what the hated one says in his videos and the advice. And it's interesting that it's different from my advice. And I'm not going to, you know, not going to discount myself here. I am a privacy expert. I am a hacker as well. I am a uh, uh, longtime programmer and cybersecurity expert. And my knowledge of programming is, you know, much too, uh, much too long a period to even tell you here. Okay. So I've been programming before many of you were born. So, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm at the top of the, uh, the pile here just because I'm only doing YouTube now doesn't mean anything. Okay. So, and I'm going to tell you why I, why I develop different ideas than some of the people on the internet and, you know, uh, why this channel is actually getting as many views as some bigger channels, even though we're just new. So, because I do it differently, guys. The difference is that I'm an actual hacker. So, if I'm going to talk about browser fingerprinting, I'm not just going to talk about it and do some bunch of research. I'm actually going to hack myself and see if I can do browser fingerprinting and see what I can hack. So, for example, I have a video on browser fingerprinting and there, it's called the browser threat test, which no one watches. And that video actually shows how you can test some of the theories that some of you talk as if you understand what's going on, but here's the test. Try it yourself. And you'll see if your theory is, lo is wrong. Like, oh, Tor browsers will, will cannot be fingerprinted. Well, in the video I show you, you can be fingerprinted with a Tor browser. And some of you are obsessed with things like, what do I do about cookies? And you you have uh, Privacy Badger and uh, all these different little uh, tools on your browser, which extensions, which are scary in itself. And you're doing everything you do need to do to turn off cookies and turn off JavaScript. And your experience in the internet is very, very difficult. And yet you're not accomplishing anything because you didn't actually study what the threat is. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And let me tell you more. Let me tell you more. You, you, uh, you go on to, uh, to my YouTube videos and you make comments like, I'm using ProtonMail. Because the hated one says I should use ProtonMail or Tutanota. And because of that, I'm using ProtonMail and I should be safer because the hated one says so. Well, look at me, guys. I don't use ProtonMail. I don't use Tutanota. I don't use any of that. And why is my advice different? Okay. Why do I say use a VPN? Why do I not say, well, use Tor 24-7? Why do I say you can watch YouTube? Somebody says, no, don't watch YouTube because uh, it's going to spy on you. you. You just need to go to library. Why do I say uh, go dump Facebook? But I don't say go dump Twitter, even though some of you dislike Twitter and YouTube for uh, censorship. But that aside, for privacy reasons, I'm not telling you that Twitter uh, or even Periscope is necessarily unsafe. Yet I tell you with no hesitation to dump uh, WhatsApp, Instagram and Facebook and you know people don't understand what the difference is and uh, uh, so there's many of these comments about what what I talk about uh, you know why why do I even recommend using Gmail uh, for certain things and why do I even recommend using Google Voice even though we know that those things will spy on you and to you know two-factor authentication and so on okay so there's a lot of things that you know is not understood and I don't know if I can cover it all today. If not, then we'll try to couple, try to cover it in a, you know, in a, a few uh, Fridays here, because it's a very, very deep topic, and uh, and uh, you know, and understand that when I give advice here, you can rely on my advice because I thought it out carefully and tested it. 
And some of you don't understand, you know, what email is. I have several videos. The video, the videos you should watch that I made are the ones that nobody watches, like my email videos. I have several email videos. I have Zuckbook videos. I have uh, Zuck, uh, browser fingerprinting uh, videos. Nobody watches any of those. You only watch the Linux or the Linux phone and stuff like that. Okay, think, guys. Watch those because nobody watches them. Uh, well, because they were made when I was not popular on YouTube, so nobody watches them. It doesn't diminish their importance. So if, if, if you need to get more detail to what I'm talking about, you need to go back to those videos uh, because those become the foundation. So I'm going to pick one topic first here. I'm going to uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna uh, pick one topic at a time. And then we'll, we'll hit it. And there are things that, you know, I don't have much of an opinion on and I may not talk about it uh, because I haven't tested it. I, I don't like to uh, talk theoretically about anything. My difference between me, the difference between me and other channels is I actually am hands-on. So if I say you can be hacked with this, I'm not going to talk about it without actually testing and seeing if I can actually hack using that or at least understand in detail how it's done so I could do it if I had to. Okay, so that's a difference with me. I'm an actual hacker and that makes a big difference. When somebody talks about browser fingerprinting, have you actually hacked somebody with browser fingerprinting and beacons or uh, somebody said uh, pixel tracking, which is a beacon, and doing all these attacks, do you actually know how to do that? Well, I do. When somebody says, can you actually load a virus on your computer from a website where you click on it and it downloads a, a uh, malware to your computer? Yeah, I, I have a video that does that. Yes, of course I can do that. Uh, I did that on the live stream, actually, on Periscope. I haven't done it on YouTube, but I did on Periscope. So anyway, the point is that uh, uh, my advice is based on evidence of things that I actually have tried, and which means it may be different than other advice given by other people. So uh, consider my advice a little bit higher level than most, okay? Th this is not the place to just have a cursory explanation of somebody who uh, is more of a press guy and can, you know, has more personality like than me and goes on here and says, oh, I know what you do. You need to go use ProtonMail, VPN Tor, and then you're going to be absolutely be safe. No, got to think it out. Okay, just in general, hello Galvano. Uh, let's see what uh, 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 Hawaii dealer Double J and Old Man and Mark R puzzles. Who did I miss? Did I miss any? Uh, look at different. I'm gonna look at a different screen here. Uh, Burnaby, Alex, Mel Gibson. Sinistos, Mindful Chase, Ryan Powers, James Miller. Welcome, folks. Iron Fist. I, I think I caught everybody else from before. And Sim6699. Okay, so. No, we're not going to talk about U-Block Origin because I don't know what the Zuck that's about. Okay, so not going to talk about something that I uh, did not research, so we're going to ignore that. Okay, first of all, let me just draw a big picture about how you need to analyze your problem okay not everyone is the same we all have different risks we all, we all have different threats so because we have different threats you cannot make an assumption about what you should do based on somebody's advice you cannot take an advice from Snowden and assume it applies to you okay uh, typical advice use signal okay uh, use telegram Nobody gives advice like use WhatsApp. That's pretty stupid. But, you know, signal signal is mentioned a lot. Okay, use signal. That's used, mentioned a lot. Uh, signal isn't perfect. Signal's not perfect. So I started using signal. Signal's not perfect. In fact, it's, it's uncomfortable for me to use it sometimes because I understand the imperfection, but then again, there's some positives about it that I don't have any alternative with, so I can use it. So, so you know, you have to define who you are in the spectrum of threats, like who's your threat. Well, Snowden's threat is different 
John McAfee's uh, threat is different. The threats threats to me is different, and the threats to Van Vix Zart here is different. And because you have different threats, like Van's threat is his landlord, I think. <laughs> Maybe. Some of you, the threat is, uh, you know, three-letter agency. Some of you, the threat is the police, uh, and so on. So if your threat is the police or somebody like that because you're engaged in criminal activity in the past and you're under surveillance, uh, don't go to my channel. This is a privacy channel, not how to evade, not how to evade uh, the police, okay? Uh, that's not what I teach. I don't teach how to evade the police, okay? Because, uh, and neither can I teach you how to evade a three-letter agency. And it's a false statement for anyone to come around and say that they can evade a three-letter agency uh, as far as active surveillance. Active surveillance is different than mass surveillance. And that is what I focus on on this channel, folks. Mass surveillance. Collection of data by the government for whatever reason that we don't know of innocent individuals. Collection of data by corporate interests like Facebook, Google, Apple, Microsoft, LinkedIn, and so on. LinkedIn is Microsoft. So all of these entities that collect our data and then use them by profiling, selling our data, and so on. Uh, and keeping it permanently on the internet where we don't have control and we lose control, that is what I am protecting you against. If, you're, if your fear is a little bit higher than that because you fear that you're being watched with active surveillance, unfortunately, you cannot take my advice uh, at all, maybe, because you shouldn't even be on YouTube. If you're on active surveillance, you shouldn't be using a phone. You shouldn't be on YouTube, shouldn't be anywhere. You shouldn't have any electronic devices. You should go off the grid and forget about all this and that's it, go off the grid because I can't give you any more advice than that. Go off the sucking grid and never use a credit card. Okay, now if you're gonna be like normal people who want privacy and uh, feel like very uncomfortable with the way the data is being collected, then you listen to me because that's what we're gonna talk about. But some of you are just so extreme and you don't understand the consequences of your choice. So the first threat that we're gonna talk about, I mean, not a threat, but the first solution that people talk about a lot is proton mail. Okay, so we're going to talk about proton mail because I hear it a lot. And I don't get mad at you for using proton mail. I don't make a video saying, dump your proton mail. Uh, not doing that, but notice I am not on proton mail. I've said that several times. Okay, I've said that several times. I am not on proton mail. I'm not on Tutanora. Uh, uh, what's the name of that? Um, that uh, email service where you can uh, use it uh, for a short while and dump it. Um, I use those occasionally, but not really, not really much. Uh, I tend to just use Gmail. And then somebody raised a big flag saying, what? You're like bending to Google and you're using Gmail for for your email? You're crazy. I'm going to use Proton Mail. I'm not going to do all of that. Okay, <clears throat> so let's talk about Proton Mail, which applies to all the different variants. Don't ask me about Tutanora and what Start Mail and whatever. Don't ask me any of that because it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter what the brand is, it's the same thing. Now, what is unique about Proton Mail as far as you're concerned? Uh, first of all, let's look at the way people perceive proton mail so you put on your business card proton uh, uh jack smith at protonmail.com uh rick satoshi at proton mail uh blessed cursor at proton mail uh dot com uh you're basically announcing to people hey hi i'm 
I got something to hide. I got something to hide. So, you know, if you want to spy on me, uh, yeah, you can easily find things to spy on me on Proton Mail. You've just zucking advertised before people even ask. I already see that you're on zucking Proton Mail and I already see the mindset. I should actually, uh, you know, get a mailing list of anybody on Proton Mail and then and and then uh, send it to my channel so you can watch because I know that people on Proton Mail are privacy focused. Okay, the problem is, what exactly is the benefit of Proton Mail? What is the exact benefit of to to Tenora? Why is it that I don't? If there's a benefit to it, why don't I use it? Why not? This is related to the fact that I have special history with all this. Almost everything I talk about is based on my deep experience with it because I use it all the time. So what's my connection with Proton Mail and what is my experience with email? Because you think, you know, I'm just the uh, internet privacy guy. I don't, don't really know anything. Well, guys, I've spent many, many uh, years uh, of my life writing a uh, applications that have to do with email. I've written email servers, SMTP, uh, email clients, and I actually came up with a product uh, a long time ago now. I think it's uh, seven years ago when I wrote it, and I wrote something like Proton Mail. That's why I have some uh, knowledge of this. I wrote my own version of Proton Mail seven ducking years ago. Then what happened was when I did a trial run and used it to, to my first users and I offered it for free for the first user so I can test it. And that's when I realized, Zuck, this is a very dangerous thing to do. Why am I doing this? I'm claiming I'm the privacy guy, or I'm not the privacy guy yet at the time, but uh, I'm, you know, into internet privacy, and here I am collecting this metadata of massive proportions. Oh, sorry, I'm too close to the mic. Sorry, too close to the mic. So what exactly can you capture in email? So this is the stuff, I, I, uh, I have several videos about this. I just said everything I talk about is the same. Two tenor. Uh, sorry, some of you just came into the video. I forget it's a live stream. Okay, so everything I talk about applies to all of them. They're no different. Two tenor, proton mail. Somebody says start mail. Whatever. It doesn't make any difference. Okay, if it's a privacy email, it doesn't uh, doesn't have make any difference. I'm talking about the same stuff. So this is a global issue with all emails, and and two tenor and proton mail are not exempted. All emails have metadata of an extreme sort. I have several email videos that show you the actual traffic that occurs between servers. Okay, there's two parts to email. Listen carefully here because this is a very complex topic. And I'm going to summarize it. You're going to have to look at the email video to get the detail. But just to, 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 uh, to talk about it clearly, email is split up into two sections. You talking to the server and the server talking to another server. Okay, this is the client to, to server section, which is typically handled with the POP3 or, uh, or IMAP uh, protocol. And this second segment is MTA to MTA, uh, mail transfer agent, MTA to MTA traffic. And it uses something called the SMTP protocol. So, let's say you're on Gmail. So, Gmail, you are talking to the Gmail server. This is that client portion we're talking about. And then, let's say you're sending an email to somebody on Yahoo. Then, the Gmail server talks to Yahoo. This segment here is called uh, the uh, SMTP side. SMTP. They're different, like, port numbers for each. This part has SMTP, too different port number than the SMTP over here. But this is the MTA or uh, the mail transfer agent uh, communications. Now one thing about 
about email, originally as it was written with POP3 uh, back from the, the 80s even, is this segment of the email client to server used to be pretty much open, completely readable. So POP3 is text-based, it's a text-based protocol. And lately they've you know, made sure that everyone uses TLS for this segment here. So this used to be open and anyone can spy and listen in on, on your network. In fact, what's kind of a hobby of mine, I'd connect to a network and watch all the traffic coming in on POP3 uh, using Wireshark and then you can spy on the traffic and read their emails and it's very, very entertaining. Okay, and easy to do because it's in plain text. So this segment here uh, is now closed to uh, that kind of hacking because most use TLS or HTTPS equivalents. It's like HTTPS. So this segment is no longer spied on. So when people say we have secure email, like Gmail will say that, oh, our email is secure, they're only talking about this segment because they're using... TLS, HTTPS. So this segment is now uh, secure, okay? Now, it doesn't mean that this server here can't see you. So if this is Gmail, it can obviously read everything that's sent to, to Gmail. If this is to Tenota, obviously they can read everything as well. If this is ProtonMail, they can read everything. What makes you think this will not be able to read anything? It reads everything, okay? Now, ProtonMail and all the other privacy email products claim that they have encryption. They, you, you're not clear on how it's used though. There's encryption only uh, on, the, on the body of the message because that's the only thing you can encrypt in email is the body. You cannot encrypt the title. It's not part of the standard. You can only encrypt the body. Uh, I don't know what their encryption scheme is. I don't know if it's end-to-end. -end. I don't believe it's end-to-end. I don't see any proof it's end to end. So, uh, uh, so, but uh, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt because it doesn't really matter if it's end to end or not. But let just say that although the the transport of the message may be uh, uh, clean to this point, this server can listen in to all the metadata, one hundred percent of the metadata, including everything that's. Uh, Encrypted or not encrypted. So if you're talking to people from Yahoo, obviously this sees everything. If you upload contact lists, obviously this server at ProtonMail sees everything. If you're doing any secret kind of talks with somebody, it will show the IP address of who you're talking to and what what's happening. They may not be able to read the body of the message because that portion will be encrypted. But the title in, and so on the subject is not going to be encrypted, including the IP addresses and everything else. So what the Zuck are you doing? The metadata is more important than the actual conversation. I don't actually need to know what you're talking about if I know who you're talking about and what the context of the conversation is. How often do you talk? Uh, you know, what, what are the names? So what are your connections in the contact list? Do you have intersecting contact lists? There's so much I can gather, timestamps, IP addresses, and so on, to even know what the Zuck is happening there. If you're uh, plotting some, some uh, terrorist activity or you're coming up with a business deal or whatever you're doing, it's going to be obvious from who you're talking to and the metadata and the timestamp and the length of the, the message and so on. Okay, and if there are attachments, how long are the attachments and so on. I can see all that. By the way, if you're sending normal mail, it's completely readable. So this server here can read everything. The central server, whether it be Gmail, Yahoo, Tutanoda, ProtonMail, can see all of the normal traffic. So even though it cannot read some 1% of your email because it's from somebody from Tutan, I mean, ProtonMail to ProtonMail, or to Tenora to to Tenora, yes, that we're, we're going to give them the benefit of the doubt that's not visible. But fact of the matter is, I know enough about everything about you because I can read the rest of your email just like Zuck in Gmail and Google. And with the added disadvantage, with the added disadvantage, guys, that I've actually seen that you're, you have something to hide. Now, McAfee says that Proton Mail is CIA. McAfee says that proton mail is CIA. So, that, so I don't have any proof of that. So I'm not going to make that claim. But it's interesting if it were because it makes sense. 
if the if the proton mail CIA they find all the people with anything to hide and they just you know that you'll prob probably have a Gmail I mean a proton mail account so very bad idea because all the metadata is in there and you're going to leave a trace with your IP address or something in proton mail when you were safer hiding in Gmail because they don't know who to search for there. You haven't been isolated in a small group. You're not the uh, fraction of 1% that's now in proton mail. If you're in proton mail, you have something to hide. So I, I'm not in proton mail. Uh, because the difference in Proton Mail, folks, is you actually advertise to people that you're in Proton Mail. You actually put the email in your social media, in your business cards, and whatever. And it's like, what a sucking bad idea. That's a little bit different if you forwarded and kept your Proton Mail secret. That might be interesting. But to publicly say I'm on Proton Mail and then to boast about it publicly that you're on Proton Mail, not smart. Not smart. For so little benefit, you've actually exposed yourself more. So little benefit, since they can read. The only benefit is that they're not selling you ads. Whereas Gmail sells you ads and there is a small percentage of your traffic that can be encrypted even though they can see the metadata. But that is balanced against the fact that they know that you have something to hide, so you're more of a target. So very, it's just not, I'm not comfortable with that. So what do I suggest? I suggest, hey, instead of doing proton mail, uh, first, make, I'm making it clear to you. The second segment of email, which is MTA to MTA, mail transfer agent to mail transfer agent, is unencrypted plain text transfer. Your email from Gmail to Yahoo, from Gmail to Proton Mail, from Proton Mail to Tutanota, uh, from Start Mail to Tutanota, from Proton Mail to Start Mail, all of these are all open. And I mean open, open. Look, look at my uh, video. I did a live stream showing that. It's completely plain text text because that is the HTTP the SMTP standard it's plain text so all I have to do is be a three-letter agency put Wireshark in here which they have a uh, NSA grade version of Wireshark listening in over here and they can listen to all the traffic from MTA to MTA and they do and apparently it's kept at the uh, AT&T pairing stations and they have word searches and so on, and that's where all the internet traffic is actually searched for, including email, is at this juncture of crossover from uh, internet service provider to internet service providers called peering stations. So that was in an article on Guardian. Uh, now, I knew this was happening, but the Guardian actually found out where they were actually doing it. So they're doing it in this AT&T peering stations. Okay, I thought it was being done at level three. I thought, the, you know, the most logical place to do this was in the uh, uh, fiber uh, optic transitions between uh, uh, fiber optic and Ethernet. But no, apparently they're doing it at specific companies like level three. So, I mean, at and AT&T then funnels the information and filters in their own filtering computers and sends it directly to the National Zucking Agency. Okay? Just encrypt your message outside of the email client. You're Zucking metadata. You just didn't pay attention to that part, didn't you? The only thing you can en encrypt in email is the body. There's n the message is not going to transport unless all of the IP addresses and everything are listed on it. And if you fake that, it will say it's spam, so it rejects it. You can't fake any of that. It actually verifies where it came from. So if it, it if you uh, identify and said, I came from this server, it's not really true. The server will say, Zuck you, ignoring your messages, and you can't send it. In fact, they now go to the domain name servers and look for a flag there to make sure you're validated on Google to make sure you're not a spammer. Okay? So what do I do myself? James Mason. No, that why did you raise that, James? That was a good question. 
James, why'd you erase that? I was about to answer that. It's perfect. Okay. So what is the actual answer to this? Well, I have, in my case, two email variations. I have my own server where I have my own domains and that's where I, uh, I have uh, a private email and business email. So I do that. And uh, I understand that when I send email out or receive email from the internet that governments and everything can see that. Understand that. Don't, don't make any exceptions. Understand that every email that flows through the internet is going to be seen by somebody, your ISP, the government, whoever. It's going to be seen. So accept that. Accept that. If you come around, come around saying, how do I protect my email? I'm going to go do proton mail and all these things. No, it's impossible to protect it because the standard does not allow for protection. Even if you uh, protect the body, you cannot protect the metadata because it's the way SMTP was written. And I'm the expert. Why am I an expert? I told you I wrote my own mail programs. Okay, I've been doing all of this with SMTP, POP3, and so on, IMAP. I have personal experience actually coding with them. I know exactly how an attachment is sent. It's in Base64. It's not encrypted. So if you send a zip file with encryption, it's in Base64. I unzip it, and then you say, oh, it's encrypted. It's a zip file that's encrypted. Uh, give me uh, 10 seconds, and I can, you know, break that encryption. You can't hide anything with email. Therefore, the answer is don't use ducking email. So when I give you advice about email, I'm actually saying that the context is don't use email. But if you're going to use it, understand that you're using it for unimportant things. Unimportant. You're better off using Braxme, Signal, Telegram than you are with email. Okay, so Braxme, Telegram, Signal, I'm okay with using those for messaging versus email. Though I'm uncomfortable with certain things about Signal and Telegram, it's okay for this purpose. If you're going to say, well, I, you know, I can use email, so can I talk on some other platform? Those are fine for that, okay, because they're not going to be able to spy on the message. <clears throat> no, there is no other way of transporting email. That's why we don't want to use email anymore. You want to dump email. <clears throat> Unfortunately, you cannot dump email because they use it for two-factor authentication. Cosmic Rose. Well, do you consider this like adult beverage water? I haven't had an adult beverage uh, Friday in a month. Jeez. I forgot what it's all about. So, when I give you advice about email, what I'm really trying to tell you is don't use email. If you're going to use email, use it in a non-serious way. In which case, if you're not going to use it for anything serious, then Zucking use Gmail. And don't say, oh, I'm going to hide my Gmail. I, you know, I'm going to be so, because they're going to browse or fingerprint my Gmail account. On the, if the Gmail that you're going to use it for is useless, then you shouldn't care. If the Gmail you're using it for is not useless, then go back to the beginning of what I said, all email is zucked up. I don't, I, I'm going to tell you the frank reality of this is uh, that my Gmail, my email is read only. 99% of it is read only. And I'm not talking about spam. I'm talking about non-spam. Uh, most of it is just, you know, account validations and logins and so on. And, you know, I, I'm, I get upset when I, uh, you know, I went to Coinbase. Okay, so if somebody's going to track me because I did a video on, on crypto, so I, you know, I use Coinbase to get some, uh, to get some initial crypto to, to test all this. So I, I went to Coinbase and I put in a small amount on Coinbase. And Coinbase will hold the amount for a certain amount of time. And then lo and behold, they get sent an email. Oh, you purchased such and such this exact amount of crypto on this date and, and and this amount is now available in your fortunately it's a very small amount so it does like who cares 
okay? It's now available today and they send it by email. Now, just think about that. Let's say I spent $100,000 to buy crypto and I went to Coinbase. Now they're gonna send an email read by the IRS saying that I just, you know, of course the IRS can just go get a direct uh, statement from Coinbase, but still hackers will see that I just received credit for $100,000 in crypto. Zuck! I have to assume that's been read. Used to be, and now Amazon changed their policy. A A Amazon changed their policy, but used to be when you order something from Amazon, they will actually say, they will email you and say, thank you for your purchase of the pink panties and the uh, double D bras, uh, the pink du double D bras, and we're gonna ship it to this name, to this address, and thank you for your purchase on Amazon. They actually would do that. And it's like, you know, so if you bought from Amazon, Google is reading that and said, ooh, this person likes to buy pink panties and, you know, this size. Uh, and three-letter agencies also know that, and I don't know who else knows that. <laughs> I mean, just the craziness of this. Now, I understand this. So I hated that about Amazon, and fortunately, they don't do that anymore. Now they say, uh, your transaction just occurred and go to your account. Good. It's about time. It's about time they care about privacy and did that. It's, you know, just the kind of craziness that we have to deal with. Okay? So, woo, pink. Uh, okay, so you understand now that when I say use email on Gmail, you know, don't spend so much time thinking about this because the, the basic assumption is email is unsafe. So if you're using email for anything serious and having long discussions with your girlfriend or boyfriend and, uh, and uh, you know, passing secret messages on email, assume that everyone has read that along the line. Your ISP definitely read it. And if you're on Gmail, well, obviously, Google algorithm will have read that to see if they can do something with that. If you send a Facebook Messenger messages, Facebook also reads that. Okay. Are you saying there are sex bots here right now, uh, uh, Mel? I don't see any. You know, there's filtering programs on, on YouTube to prevent that. Okay, so you, you uh, uh, are you uh, understanding what I'm saying here so far? So please don't be misguided by my saying use Gmail because, uh, you know, <clears throat> if you understand what I'm saying, it's light things on Gmail, don't use it for anything important. Now, sometimes you got to get, you know, important papers, uh, you know, for example, uh, the government will send you stuff on uh, announcements and email and whatever and tax reporting details. They don't put data on there, but they still kind of expose you a little bit. And uh, that I put to my personal email account so that I'm only exposed in the MTA to MTA transfer uh, the, the machine is mine, so then I don't have to worry about that part being read. Okay, so it just it's slightly more private to have your own server. It's it's better than uh, than using uh, to Tenora and and Proton Mail because your server only you're seeing it. Okay, so there's actually no benefit if you're you know let's say you have a friend who wants to talk to you on in secret, set up your own server and talk to yourself. It'll be actually be pretty safe. Okay, let me repeat that again. <clears throat> I have a Brax Me server, for example. Let's say somebody. Let's say I want to talk to one of you so so privately that, I, but you you really want to use email, and I don't. But you said I demand to use email because we're going to send business transaction data over. Okay, because let's say we're sending business transaction back and forth, and you demand to use email. Well, I'll give you a Brax Me email, which is the same domain as mine. So it's the same server then there is no MTA to MTA traffic. You're just in the server. Since I'm the only one that can read it, then it's the safest place to be. It's safer than ProtonMail. No one else can read it. Okay, I'm going to tell you, it's very hard to set up 
an email server, I you know, it's it's quite difficult. If you want me to do it for you, it's 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 difficult. Okay, I could do it for you, and you you know, I could set it up, and you you uh, you rent it, <clears throat> and it's not it's not super cheap to do. It's it's not it's it's expensive because you you need two servers to do it. This is to do it safely without getting hacked. Otherwise, you're going to get hacked. And uh, hacking on email servers is very hard. So, so uh, it's a very hard thing to do. So, so I do it, and that's the safest. If you control your own server, it's your server, and you're the one that sees the traffic, then nobody else can see it, then you're safe. By the way, we have a lot of people here tonight. That's a lot of concurrent viewers. Uh, <clears throat> like 20% higher than normal. That's pretty good. Thank you. So, uh, but yet we only have 35 likes. So apparently, uh, many of you don't like what I'm talking about. So, uh, if you think you might like what I'm talking about so far, then you may want to hit that like uh, button there. That would be so appreciated. So, yeah, I mean, uh, if there's 105 concurrent viewers, then there's probably 150 of you or more that have been here. Maybe 200 of you have already been here. So, uh, yeah, if you uh, like what you're learning so far. Again, my advice is different than the hated one. I'm a little bit more practical based on my own experience. I don't really rely on somebody giving me advice. I'm going to test it myself and test all the theories myself to make sure when I give you advice, it's going to be accurate. So my advice is top-notch level because I know I've tried it. Okay? So... So, oops, I actually tapped on my computer. It doesn't have a touch screen. <clears throat> okay, so when I give you this specific advice, just understand that I am, I am not, uh, uh, my advice is not given lightly. It's based on a lot of technical experience about doing this. Okay, so hopefully I explained email. Any more questions about email before I go on? <clears throat> okay, any more uh, I have so many disagreements with hated one. I don't know why. I mean, I would imagine he's so popular that he's got to be more intelligent than that, but I don't know. Some of his comments, uh, I, I've never watched him. People are actually telling me what, telling me what he says, and, you know, he's going to tell you, oh, go to Signal and go to Telegram because Snowden recommends that, and it's like, no, I don't necessarily tell you to go to Signal and Telegram. It may not be safe to go to Signal and Telegram. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Depends. No, I can't repeat the advice AS. You're going to have to watch that segment of the uh, the uh, uh, video later. But I'll give you a, a one-sentence summary. Don't use docking email. If you're going to use it, don't use 210 and ProtonMail. Set up your own server or use Gmail for unimportant emails, but keep your emails unimportant. That's it. It's very hard to set up an email server. You have to have some special cybersecurity skills to set up an email server or because it's going to get hacked. I've been temporarily hacked because of mistakes. They're always looking for holes. So you want me to set up an email server for you? I can do that and you you can, uh, you know, <clears throat> hire me to do it for you. I'll charge you money to do it because it's, it's time consuming and then you can use it and then you pay the monthly due to whoever. Uh, but once it's set up, you have to uh, understand that it's uh, it's very very difficult to manage. Okay, uh, I've been I've been hacked by spammers, uh, uh, and you know, if there's some little thing you don't know, they come up with something new, then they're gonna attack that and so on. So, so yeah, it, it takes a bit of expertise. And and uh, if if you want like a email server, most of you will just go to uh, buy email from somebody else. The problem is somebody can read it. Then you say, I'm going to use, you know, ProtonMail. Somebody's going to read that too. So you're kind of zocked unless it's your own server, then less people read it. And certainly if it's internal, like a business, only the people who run the servers can see it. And that's what you really want. Internal email where you control the server, then you'll be a lot better off. Okay. Almost everything is Zuck Waffles. 
You can use Brax, just don't do email. I mean, Brax can do attachments and whatever, attach photos and have conversations. I mean, you, Brax me is already there. The only argument about not using Brax me is that, well, nobody's going to use it. They would still want what they want to use, which is email. Well, you know, it's zucked up world. I, what can I tell you? People want to use Facebook because their family is on Facebook. Okay, it's just, there's all these holes and excuses. And I'm going to tell you, email is an excuse. There is no excuse to, to using email when you know it's the least secure thing you can do. And I have no solution for you. There is nothing secure in email, period. I don't care if you use PGP, nothing. I, I had an argument with, some, with this journalist uh, on, on some tech magazine. Uh, tech, uh, you know, what's her name? Tech something. Uh, because this guy wrote an article saying, oh yeah, you know, uh, PGP, use PGP. And it's like, suck. Who sucking cares about using PGP when your subject matter, your IP address, everything's on there. <clears throat> How the heck do you have uh, secret sources when all the metadata shows who you're talking to do to? So forget that. Okay. So lesson number one today is emails and safe. And so if I tell you use Gmail, it's because it's used for unimportant purposes to set up social media accounts pseudo anonymously, meaning with fake names. So you set up a Twitter account without Jack Smith at gmail.com. Instead, you say Jack in the Beanstalk at gmail.com. That should be your email. And that's what I want to use the Gmail for only. And some of you say, well, I got to use Facebook. You know, my family's on there. Well, I can't help you. That's one of the things that, you know, there's no solution to that either. Kind of like email. There are things in life where there's no solution. Email's one. Facebook is one. Dump them. Okay, next topic. <clears throat> next topic. I hope I summarized that quickly, okay? Because uh, <laughs> that took an hour and that's only one topic. My goodness, we're not going to get anywhere here. Okay, next topic is going to be about cookies, browser fingerprinting, this whole thing about uh, using uh, Privacy Badger and, you know, all of this different things that you do on your, uh, use Brave and so on, all the different precautions you do on your browser and you're spending so much time doing it thinking that it actually protects you. And I'm going to surprise you with something that the hated one isn't going to tell you. The hated one is not going to tell you this. No, not TechLore. It's a, it's a publication. <clears throat> uh, it's one of those uh, Huffington properties. So Verizon now, right? <clears throat> anyway, I talked to the, the editor was the one I had an argument with. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, people's advice on how to set up your browsers. And I was told the hated one says, yeah, yeah use, use all these tools, Privacy Badger, and it's a long list, and use Brave, and delete your cookies, and so on and so forth. And use Facebook, I mean, uh, Firefox profiles and containers, and Facebook containers, and, and all that. Anybody heard of that advice? I use a Tor router, James. I use a Tor router. I don't necessarily use a Tor browser. But I use Tor. I use a Tor router. Okay, anybody heard that advice? All the stuff that, uh, you know, what you need to do with cookies. And you spend so much time with cookies. And the reason you're spending time with cookies is because of these trackers. Heard about that? And the fact that uh, you, you want to avoid these trackers, and so you go through all the steps to avoid trackers, and, uh, and uh, so you think you're safe now because you managed to use all of these tools to avoid the trackers. Okay, so let me tell you the bad news, guys. Let me tell you the bad news. Again, a lot of people give advice. Again, I haven't really watched the hated one, so I'm not going to criticize. Maybe somebody gave me wrong information. 
Maybe he didn't really say this. I don't know. But it's basically what is understood by some of his followers to come to me and say, well, the hated one says this. Okay. I don't care about cookies. I don't block my cookies. I don't do anything with my cookies. I don't delete the cookies. Well, sometimes I do, but not always. Uh, usually when there's a bug, I need to clear it. And uh, I don't worry about the tracking on cookies at all. Wow. That, that, is that a shock right there? Yes, jellyfish, whatever term you call it, the, uh, Firefox has this compartmentalization thing that they uh, where you can set up different profiles and and you can isolate Facebook and so on uh, track pixel tracking is for email Mel Gibson don't don't confuse the issue we're not talking about beacons and tracking pixel tracking that's a whole different story Okay, so you've heard about this, all the stuff that, you know, how you're supposed to defend yourself about cookies. Well, I'm going to tell you the bad news. And the bad news is coming from a hacker. I hate theoretical discussion because, you know, uh, if you don't really know the facts, then you, the information can be incorrect. In my case, I actually write browser fingerprinting code. I write pixel tracking beacon code. I have tests of that that I have in the live streams that people don't watch. Uh, all the way even back to Periscope days, you know, four years ago even. So I'm going to tell you that browser fingerprinting is one of the most dangerous things that the internet has ever invented. And the solution that people are thinking about is how to block the cookies because they think Browser fingerprinting is tied to cookies. Okay. And as you know, as Jellyfish just uh, just mentioned there, that's not what I teach. What I teach is forget that. The only thing I teach you is browser isolation, something that I invented. No one in the internet has talked about this. I was the first one to talk about this. I even invented my own term, which people use in a different context. And I call it browser isolation. I don't say compartmentalize using Firefox. No, I don't believe in that. I believe in browser isolation. So install as many browsers as you can on your computer. And that's how you isolate because apps and fingerprints cannot cross a browser. Okay, cannot cross a browser. So that's my way. That's my invented way. Uh, the browser fingerprinting avoidance using containers and compartments and profiles in Firefox, mostly it's Firefox, doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is I wrote my own fingerprinting program. It's on the video browser threat test. It's on my uh, cybersecurity videos list. It's on one playlist. It's first three in there, I think. Again, nobody watches that. Uh, have I even gotten three thousand views in that? I don't. I don't even. I don't even know. Some of my videos only have a thousand views. But the video I have on on email hacking, by the way, because I hack, I did a hackathon where I hacked email live. Uh, that got ten thousand viewers on uh, live, on Periscope. So, you know, that's uh, that was good. But I moved it over to YouTube and nobody saw it. So anyway. Hated one says to use uBlock Origin HTTPS everywhere and decentralized plugins. Okay, I don't want that goose tech. That's garbage. Why is it garbage, guys? The problem with that is browser fingerprints do not need to use cookies. Problem number one. If Facebook does not need to use the cookies, Google does not need to use the cookies. Therefore, 
What the fuck are you blocking? So you have to understand the attacker first. Can you in fact get information from a browser and fingerprint it without a cookie? The answer is yes. All I have to do is get your fingerprint, store it on my server, and if you log into Facebook or Google, if the fingerprint matches, I've matched you externally without even saving anything on your Zucking computer. And somebody would say, well, uh, I tested this fingerprint over here and it didn't do that. Well, that's the mistake because fingerprinting can be done at different levels. You can be fingerprinted, for example, on the basis of an IP address. You can be fingerprinted based on your browser. You can be fingerprinted on three or four points, 10 points, 100 points, and each one has different granularity. But if you have some other data that you can use with it, you can actually narrow it down separately and you do not need the cookie. In fact, a lot of them don't save anything in the cookies anymore because they know this. So a lot of you think you got a defense by blocking the cookies and they can browser fingerprint you anyway. The solution is to not let the browser fingerprint give data and the actual solution is called browser isolation. Whether you like it or not, if you have five browsers on your computer, those five browsers will have a different fingerprint. There's no way to make those fingerprints match. No way. So, give you one specific example here. Okay? Give you one specific example. Let's talk about Facebook. Let's say I put this one browser here on Facebook. Put Google on here. So Google, Facebook, and then three, four different other purposes. Okay, so anything Google I put on here, YouTube, all that's in here. There's no need to spread you, you I mean Google into several because the information on Google is the same for all platforms. So just keep them on one. So the fingerprint will be known anyway. So just keep all Google in one, all uh, Facebook in one. And then let's say you go to Amazon over here or maybe everything else on here. And then maybe, uh, you know, uh, business stuff on here okay and maybe some other thing reserved for special research or porn or whatever keep it separate okay now here's what happens this guy here Facebook does not see anything from Google there's no interaction there's no fingerprint match nothing can be taken from this it can't cross this guy, by the way, this is only in computers. This not, does not apply to phones. Phones are a completely different issue. This guy here is Google, can see everything that's Google, but cannot see anything that's not Google, including Facebook. This Amazon here cannot see Google, and Google cannot see Amazon, cannot see Facebook, cannot see anything. Your business stuff cannot see anything else. There's no way to cross the browser fingerprint. Therefore, no data can cross. Yes, if you're going to use Google, one of those browsers should be Chrome. This should be Chrome. I always say use Brave for this. Why? Because Brave is kind of restrictive and it's perfect for Facebook, even though, you know, it deletes the cookies, which I don't think Facebook cares, but uh, heck, it helps a little bit. So this one here, use Brave. YouTube, use Chrome. Chrome. Some of you, I hate Chrome. I'm not going to use Chrome. For Google, use Chrome because Chrome is going to spy on you. So use Chrome for Google. Then it can't spy on you anymore. There's no, and then turn off your Google activity controls and change your search engine. There you go. Now, what you do on Firefox, up to you. If you want to use compartments and profiles, whatever, I don't think it's necessary because it only protects cookies. It has no other protection. Uh, since the only two companies that do browser fingerprinting uh, is actually Google and Facebook, you've already isolated them, so therefore there's no more purpose being too critical with cookies because who are you protecting from? Okay, so I don't, 
I don't really need to do all of that cookie stuff because there's no data in the cookies because of other things that I've done to myself. A, I always use pseudo anonymity in all the websites. So if I, if one of these browsers, uh, let's say this browser is used for social media. Okay. By the way, you can load several browsers on your phone too. So let's say I use this browser for social media. Okay. Social media browser right there. Well, I will make sure that browser always uses a different name. So if I'm going to use Twitter, the email will be different. The, uh, you know, you got to organize your life. You compartmentalize your life the same as your browser. You, you separate them out like your browser. And then you're going to find out that's, uh, that, wow, <clears throat> that's very smart. I mean, that's, uh, you know, they can't get data. If they can't get data, then what's the point? What, what, you know, if, what, so what if they know that, you know, so, so what if they know that I'm Rob Braxman? I'm already Rob Braxman on YouTube. So, so YouTube knows I'm Rob Braxman. Well, so what? You know, do you know anything else about my life? So I make sure that I block everything else about my life and that is what's important. I don't block you from knowing what you want to know on YouTube about privacy topics. Are you on social? Why are you on social media? Because I want to be. Uh, why are you on social media, Sim? See, you don't have to be afraid of social media. If you took the th kind of thought process I put in many, many years ago, you know, some of this is planned out, you know, for a long time. I, you know, my internet life was planned out since the beginning of the internet. I already knew not to post things on the internet. I already knew not to post images of myself on the internet. So all of the images of myself on the internet are this channel and my Periscope channel and my Twitter channel. That's it. Okay. Thank you, Mary Ann. Do I need a stock of water in the boat? The boat has water. It has water tanks. Well, you could say the hated one doesn't show his face. So, you know, I don't care that I show my face because I've crafted, you know, my my social media because I'm a little smarter than most people. The hated one probably has a real job and can't show his face. Well, you know what? This is my real job and this is the only face you need to understand is social media. This face is about privacy. This face will not do anything else but privacy. Okay. Uh, do what? Could you in reinstall the browser to reset your fingerprint? No. When you have a print fingerprint, you have a fingerprint. Is it safe? You can change computers. That changes the fingerprint. Changing computers changes the fingerprint. Changing your motherboard will change the fingerprint. Changing your graphics card will change the fingerprint. It has to be hardware change. Okay, now, this is a little different with phones. Different with phones, guys, because so a lot of the stuff I'm talking about, they can scoop the information about you from the phone. Google is most dangerous on the phone. <laughs> You're spending all your time worrying about cookies, and they're spying on your phone, so it's like, you know... Put some balance in your life. It's in the cookies that they're, not in the cookies that they're spying on you. It's in your sucking phone. 90% is occurring in here. I even brought the wrong sucking phone here. This is the sucking iPhone. The one I don't use. Okay, this is spying on you. This matches by something called a device fingerprint not a browser fingerprint a device fingerprint for example it can take the sim card number your imei and send that over to google and apple and whoever and identify you and at the app level and they'll know that it's the same party so when you use whatsapp and you use facebook and they keep the same device fingerprint 
you are zucked. Since they shared information, then you are zucked because, oh, he's using WhatsApp and he just used Facebook a second ago. Okay? And then you got that data being sold and then the uh, weather app and Yelp. And I was looking at the, you know, I put in uh, NetGuard on my uh, degoogled phone. You know, I sell, I sell you guys a degoogled phone. And I was just watching, you know, Yelp and, and uh, Waze. And that was sending data when the apps weren't in action. Those were checking into home base. Those apps were checking into home base. Yelp and and uh, Waze. Okay, so isn't that suspicious when they're doing something in the background? When you're not using the app? The app is not running. Why is it sending stuff when the app is not supposed to be running? Okay. A browser can get GPU fingerprint? Yes. But again... The browser uh, can be tricked with browser isolation technique that I just mentioned. Uh, but a phone cannot be tricked because of the device fingerprint. So this is the most dangerous thing. Okay, I'm going to... Uh, okay, I'm running out of time. So I'm, I'm going to refocus this into kind of a little bit broader discussion here to make sure that, again... We're trying to, to differentiate myself between myself and other people on YouTube that claim to be privacy experts and wonder why, and you wonder why my advice is different than theirs. I'm giving you the logic of why my advice is different because it's based on very advanced testing and knowledge of what I've done here. For example, the, the reason... I know about browser fingerprinting and device fingerprinting and so on. It's because I do that. I'm a hacker. Okay, so I spend all my time thinking about how I'm going to hack somebody. So I'll, I'll say, okay, what things can I choose, you know, about their activities? What the normal people do? So I watch what I do and I say, oh, look at the way he did his password. Look at, you know, look at the way he did this. And then... The way I do things, and I say the average person might do that, and in which case then that's a, uh, you know, a way around some of these issues. So, uh, if you're, you know, if you're as good as doxing as I am, I'm, I'm uh, also a doxing expert, and I can dox anyone because, and I have, you know, pretty, almost a perfect score in doxing. You know, I can dox anyone. And the reason is I know what mistakes people will make. I just, you know, I know what mistakes you're going to make on the internet, in which case I'm going to find it. I know what mistakes I've made on the internet, and I'm pretty skilled, and yet I make mistakes, and I know where I'm going to be found as well. So I don't worry about that too much, because the fact of the matter is, it's nothing I tell you is, is perfect. Uh, but it's... Uh, <clears throat> It's good enough for the average, you know, person to defend against. Uh, but maybe, uh, you know, against somebody more advanced, uh, I may not have a chance either. But then if you hack me, I can hack you back. You can just block Waze, Lakuta, Saborg with NetGuard, and then when you're using it, unblock it. Thank you, Alt Account. Should we access pseudo anon Google accounts in different browsers? Uh, what are you using those Google accounts for? I say just turn off your Google activity controls and worry more about you know what it is that you're trying to hide from. So the next thing we're going to talk about is a little bit of context as far as threats. And, you know, what, what are we defending our, ourselves against and how sometimes we can spend our time focused on the wrong thing and not really understanding why we don't need to focus on certain things. Like that question on, should you have multiple Google accounts separate or not? I can't answer that for you because you have to think about it uh, yourself. Because you may have already been browser fingerprinted, and in which case they may have matched it. The other thing is, if you know it's on Google, they have this little feature where 
if you have multiple Google accounts, then you can actually choose which login you want to use. I always erase that because that's a database that connects all of those accounts live. So if you have a list of Google accounts on your computer, that's actually a database. So I delete that. I make sure that there's only one Google account on the browser at any one time. And of course, I don't have to tell you, have a VPN. Okay? Some people say, well, VPNs are unsafe. Like, Zuck. Okay, if you're, if you're uh, Snowden, yeah, you can worry about that. But for the average person, let's not waste time arguing about that. Okay? Snowden uh, should not be using a VPN. The rest of us, that is what we want because it's less visible. We're not advertising to people that we are those that have something to hide. So we want to, you know, kind of be more general there by, uh, by uh, using a VPN. A lot of people use VPNs. They use it for business too. So you connect to your business network, especially now during this crisis, a lot of people work from homes so to connect to the office VPNs. So everyone's on a VPN. The, the ISP sees the VPN and they, they don't know it's a VPN, but they see encrypted traffic. And that's not unusual now, nowadays. So HTTPS looks like a VPN. So it doesn't really matter that you're in a VPN. That's not anything to worry about. What, what I'm more concerned about is that uh, questions like, should you use different Google accounts and, you know, and over worried about browser fingerprinting and all this without actually setting up the baseline. The baseline is that you cannot be perfect with hiding from social media, you're going to make a mistake. If somebody looked at the database of every time you made a mistake, uh, you know, I'm sure there will be a record of that. I'll give you an example. Let's say that, uh, let's say that you're, uh, you know, a priest and uh, somebody may be tracking your internet activities. And for a priest, you certainly don't want to have somebody have a record of you seeing porn makes sense right i mean two incompatible things if somebody found the data that you were watching porn uh and have a record of it on on uh, on uh, uh the internet then you know might as well give up your your job and the same with many 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 uh, uh careers you know where you have to be consistent in your behavior. The problem in the internet is that it could be a mistake. As you know, you click on, uh, you know, certain things and certain topics and things pop out that may not be what you intended. Or even worse, there's a pop-up. You go into a website and then it pops up into porn. N not very unusual for spamming purposes. It actually happens a lot. But you don't want that on your record. So, uh, given that that happens on the internet, and again, me, I'm I'm always very careful about what 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 I I always expect that the principal is watching what I do on the internet twenty four seven. Therefore, I always make sure uh, that my identity on the internet is known only to me. And that's how I protect myself. What is a VPN after all? What is a VPN? Well, a VPN is disinformation. So the actual solution, guys, to everything in life is disinformation. Now, uh, where's my friend Huge D Byte? He didn't come in today. But uh, Huge D Byte uh, is, you know, longtime friend here on the internet. Uh, uh, you know, from anonymous days, and uh, he understands a lot about you know what I talk about, and he's very advanced uh, in the disinformation side. And he he said something to me uh, a couple of days ago, which was stated so well because I believe it, and it's the same belief I have. But the way he stated it is is interesting, and I'll give him credit for it because uh, 
because he uh, he uh, he made the point specifically, and that is, it's not about hiding information from Facebook and Google, because sometimes we cannot hide information from Facebook and Google. Well, I can because I'm not on Facebook. Okay, I can because I'm not on Facebook. But if you can't hide from Facebook or Google. What is the solution? The solution is simple, folks. And this is really what I'm teaching you all the time. You don't need to be so hyper about everything. What you need to do is disinformation. The purpose of a VPN is that when you're on a VPN, your ISP doesn't see your traffic because it's encrypted. And it comes out of the VPN. And the VPN data now is many people. So many people are using a VPN at the same time and are going to different websites. And all of those websites that the community is seeing now appear to be yours which is why on my vpn i don't want any bad guys okay there's been i've had a problem my my servers were shut down uh, uh today by my isp because one of you one of you subscribers of mine persisted in running BitTorrent and feeding as a, as a server their own computer so everyone on the internet is downloading this illegal content from this one computer and it's registered to my VPN and my ISP shut me down. Okay? So I don't want those kinds of people because, you know, just disruptive. So if you're going to use BitTorrent, don't use my VPN. We, we want to keep my VPN free of people who will expose us. We want the VPN to look like just a bunch of people doing normal things. Uh, with different beliefs, some are Republicans, some are Democrats, some are uh, freedom lovers, some are not, some are uh, uh, business people and housewives and so on, young and old. That's what I want the VPN to be. So the traffic then is mixed. So I don't have to hide that traffic from somebody who wants to capture it because what's happening is coming out of that end, someone there, may, some of that traffic may be yours, but maybe not. And because it's so confusing, they cannot get any specific data on it to identify you. And the data becomes useless. So the trick, people, is that if you make the information useless, they got nothing on you. It doesn't matter if they listen to you if they have nothing on you. Okay, let's say that somebody's spying on your phone. Now you can't do this on the phone, but just give give me. The, I'm just giving you an analogy here. So the problem with a phone is tied to your identity. Okay. Now think about this. This because this is the concept concept of a VPN. What if your phone was used by a thousand people, and all of you shared the same phone, like the old days of a pay phone? What if a thousand people share the same phone? That is excellent. That's what a VPN does. Okay? Don't look at it with too much study about what it's supposed to be. What it is, it makes the information so jumbled up that it's hard to make sense of who's who and prevents Google, Apple, you know, Facebook and everyone else from actually analyzing the data and the AI to come up with an identity. The data is still there, but it cannot be identified. For the same reason that I don't really care what, you know, what email is tracked from my email because it's not my real name and there's no important traffic on there since I never respond. So the key is to set up the baseline of your life on the internet to be based on separation of real identity and pseudo-anonymous identity. They have to be separate. Don't mix them up. Different emails, different life, different browsers, different as different as you can. Okay? And different phones. Think about that. Different phones. Physically. If you know, I, I haven't actually, you know, thought about that, but since I'm very anonymous myself, but if some of you need to, let's say you're a, um, a doctor and you want to have access to the standard stuff, and then you may want to carry a uh, phone for doing doctor things, maybe on some degoogled phone, and then have a Linux phone for complete non-trackability. 
where you have a different phone number and everything. I mean, these things are not very big now, so you know, if you have two of them in your pocket, they're not they're not going to be too bad. So it's just kind of thinking, you know, separation. That's all you want to do is separate your life on the internet. And I'm not going to tell you specific tricks. That's that's one possibility. Uh, how many devices? Uh, how many devices is good? You just need two. I have two. I have uh, a Linux phone and and a uh, de -go not this. I don't use this. Uh, this has only a YouTube notifications. All I use this for. You see all the YouTube notifications. Uh, you know, I don't really, uh, I don't really uh, 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 use this iPhone anymore. So my my uh, thing is to separate my lives so, so that because of the device fingerprint. So, and I don't use Facebook. Facebook is the worst because it's attached to a real name. This is why I'm so anti any app that has a real name requirement. LinkedIn, Facebook, those are two top ones. If the app requires you to have a real name, dump it. If the app does not require you to have a real name, close down your old account, start up with a new one. Don't connect the two and the old. Uh, if you're famous and you already used your original name, then you set up a separate identity, uh, maybe in a separate device. Okay. How do you create your own secure email server? No, I can't tell you that, Goose Tech. You, 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 I, you know, you have to set it up the standard way. It's a lot of configuration. I use PostFix. It's hard. It's tedious to do. Want me to do it? You got to pay me. Uh, uh, you know, the many many hours to, to to take to do that. It's gonna take a long time. Take a day at least. Okay. What router are you using with ISP that supports VPN? It's the best one, guys. Made for that. You know what's nice about a, a, a Brax router? Is that you don't have to set up your phone. So this phone, this phone connects to this router on Wi-Fi. Okay. The phone does not need to know it's in a VPN. So it doesn't actually know it's in a VPN. It's just using normal internet, Wi-Fi. So the phone has no knowledge, and yet it's being given this information through here. But this phone does not need to know. If you're running the VPN app on the phone, the phone actually knows you're in a VPN. But if you're running through a router, it does not know. <clears throat> so it's quite entirely possible for Facebook to know you're running a VPN right now. It's also entirely possible for, for Google to know what the actual IP address is, is in the Google, I mean the uh, the router address. It can know that because it's known to the OS. Now, a D Google phone doesn't have that. I have a Nighthawk uh, AC1900 or something. Nighthawks are cheap. So what I do is I run it through this as my wired router and then I run my Nighthawk through this. But this is a VPN router, wired. I run it wired. Because you have a choice. You can run this wired or Wi-Fi. So I run this wired and then the Nighthawk is plugged into this. Does reformatting a Linux phone change its fingerprint? No. It's the device fingerprint. Changing a uh, OS will change the fingerprint. Changing the uh, SIM card will change the fingerprint. So for example, if you're on uh, Google Android and you change it to Lineage OS, that will change the fingerprint. So if you're running uh, Nexus 5 Android, then you convert it to Ubuntu Touch. As I sell you on my store, I sell you Ubuntu Touch on a phone. Nexus 5, obviously that changes fingerprint. Yeah, the, the difference is this new gadget is uh, works now in wired mode, gigabit. This is a gigabit router. So uh, it can still run as a Wi-Fi, but it's a gigabit router. So that's the, the change. And you can still buy this on my store. 
uh, metal wire or optical wire. So what was required to get unbanned from your ISP? You have to pay a fine? No, I had to change ISPs. No, I got banned by the ISP, so I had to change ISP. So if you're going to be a bad guy and, you know, use BitTorrent and download illegal videos and things, don't use my VPN. If you want to be uh, in a VPN where most of the people are clean and law-abiding and are off the radar, my VPN is the best. If you want to be in a VPN with a lot of spammers and bad guys and Bitcoin thieves and so on, go on PIA and NordVPN. They're on there like crazy. Okay? If you want to have a select group of people and all of them are in brackets on me, uh, go use Bytes VPN. So Bytes VPN is, is the select. And then we're off the radar and uh, our VPN actually is not uh, known to be a VPN by most sites. They have no idea it's a VPN. Okay? So if you're going to be downloading whoever that one was that was down, it's, this is the problem with my VPN. I don't have Zucking Logs. So there was somebody con continuously running BitTorrent in the background. One of you did th this. So if you haven't, you know, come to my videos in a long time and you forgot that you're running BitTorrent in the background, you caused me to shut down the VPN server. Whoever it was caused me to lose the server. So don't ask me for a sucking refund. Okay, the damages to me is humongous. The damage to me is humongous from this. All because somebody was doing illegal activity. I'm not going to give you a refund for doing illegal activity. It already cost me. I will reinstate your account after we verify that you're not going to do this. <clears throat> so talk to me and, and uh, so you, you know. So chances are you don't even know that this is happening to you. You probably, you know, you probably got hacked. Maybe your kids loaded BitTorrent or something. But we're going to find out and then you're going to remove BitTorrent. And then uh, once we know that you have no BitTorrent, then, you, then we will talk about it. And then you can come back on. But didn't you just tell everyone how to shut you down? Uh, so what? You have to subscribe to my VPN first. So pay me money and shut me down. Okay, I'll, if a lot of you did that, then at least I keep your money. No, I actually have ByteStore. There's already a service that's already anonymous called ByteStore. It's already included in the plan. Okay, just use ByteStore. Don't use ByteVPN. You get ByteStore for free. Don't use the VPN. It's not like I don't give you an avenue. I do, but keep everyone safe. Use ByteStore. Well, obviously, I cannot log. You say, I log if I want. Well, where's the log? I had, the reason I was terminated by the uh, ISP was because the ISP uh, said, well, you're not logging, so we're going to terminate you. I said, well, I can't log, so we're done. So to this day, I still don't know who the bad guy is. I don't say bad guy. It's the uninformed individual who's using BitTorrent. Okay, I don't know who that is. Uh, you know, I do know who's on the uh, VPN at any time, so I can have a general idea of, you know, a, a small number of people that may be the target. Uh, beyond that, though, I can't accuse, you know, a specific one and say, you did that because I don't know what you're doing. Okay, what, what happens is the, the, uh, the bit torn, you're, you're serving your server, so, so every bad guy not bad guy, the copyright holders, searches for servers that are serving data on the internet and they find you and get your IP address and then say, we're going to target you and give you a DMCA notice. And then they target me. Okay, so that they don't want to use you to use uh, uh, BitTorrent. Well, I don't want to use BitTorrent either on Bytes VPN. But if you use Bytes Store, I'm not going to know that you're using <laughs> BitTorrent. But you have to turn off BitTorrent after you use it. It runs in the background. Some of you don't know this. It runs in the background. You can't say, I'm going to use ByteStore to download and then I leave it on. Suck. 
then you switch over to uh, the normal network and your machine is you know s s serving the same file peer to peer networks is give and take you take something and they want to, you to give back and you give back by being the server so BitTorrent runs in the background so just stop using BitTorrent if you don't understand how to use it stop you don't know anything just don't use it it's so unsafe okay did he make Tor RPI? Yes, this comes with Tor too. You can choose to run it as Tor, VPN, or open router. It's already built in. Uh, if you use only the Tor portion of this, it's free. There's no service fee. If you use a VPN, you got to pay for the VPN subscription. So anyway, this is available. You, This is a great product. This is one of my top sellers. And I need every help I can get to support this channel. Nobody is buying anything right now, obviously. You know, you're all unemployed, and so am I. When you're unemployed, I'm also unemployed. I have to work every day, though. I got to make these videos and everything, and, and it's very hard to survive. So, so uh, I'm working harder than ever, and yet I'm not making any kind of living. So, yeah, I think, uh, whoopee, I made 150 bucks last month. If you want to torn, go to Leo Laporte and Steve Gibson VPN. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, how about that? If you want to do uh, that kind of VPN, go buy some other VPN for that. Okay. So yes. Yeah, so if you uh, if you want to uh, if you want to uh, uh, do bad stuff like spamming and downloading from BitTorrent, yeah, go to PIA or NordVPN. That's best for you. I'm going to be glad that you t give them your business. Okay? <clears throat> but those of you who are, uh, you know, good good people that just want privacy, want to be protected, this VPN that I have shown on there is the best. Okay? Because we're not even registered as a VPN. There are so many, there's so few users per IP address that we don't show up anywhere. Because Google and Apple and all these have a collection of lists of IP addresses and how many people use them. I don't know. I've been. I haven't been doing any programming sim. I'm a. Uh, I'm a YouTube broadcaster, and YouTube broadcasters are very poor. How do you hook up your router if you have DSL? I, this is hooked up to DSL. You plug it into the DSL modem. No, you plug into your existing router. So you have your modem. And then you have your Wi-Fi router that comes with that. You plug this in to, to the Wi-Fi router, and then you have a second segment that's VPN. So you have two segments, a VPN and a non-VPN one. So again, simple. Modem, regular Wi-Fi router, this. So this is the third leg in the chain. There's two ahead of it. Modem. Wi-Fi, the regular Wi-Fi, and this Wi-Fi. Available at my store, which is in the description. Don't trust uh, Jacob. Uh, why would you trust Byte VPN? Uh, trust PIA. Hang out with all the spammers and all the people who do BitTorrent and all that. Go to PIA because they're so trustworthy that all spammers are there. <clears throat> I know you're saying, well, you, that's kind of mean. We, we, you know, then I'm not going to go buy your product. It doesn't matter. You know, I, uh, when people ask me that kind of question, why do we, why, you know, I dedicate my life to providing a service here. And you say, why should we trust you? Well, I guess you can't. So don't listen to me then. I mean, why am I here telling you all the stuff that you need to learn to be safe? And then you say, well, why do we trust you? Well, then go to the hated one and listen to his advice and follow that. I spent all my time trying to teach you. And hopefully you're seeing that I'm authentic. If you're not, then you shouldn't really be watching this channel. Okay? Seriously? I just told you that I'm being kicked out by my ISP 
because I don't have a log. They're demanding that I have a log. Demanding that I have a log. So if I have a log, I don't have to tell you this. I'll just kick out, terminate the account of the person in question, and I'll be safe, and I don't have to announce anything and do it quietly and show them, yes, I have a log, and I identify the problem account, and I'm done. So here I'm announcing to you that I don't have a log. I'm getting kicked out by my ISP, and you're asking me if you should trust me. It's like, oh my gosh. <clears throat> But, understandably, Jacob, it's actually a fair question that, you know, I hear all the time. But I'm just uh, answering it my way. Would you like to do the privacy verifications? Do so. I mean, there's nothing to hide on the VPN. You want to give you a... Uh, a uh, a pass to look at the VPN traffic? I mean, if it's really that important to you, I mean, you got to pay me though. I mean, I can't waste my time doing this. I mean, for, for 89 bucks a year, I don't need to think that I need to spend as much time. But if you feel like you need to do this and you want to do an audit, sure. I'll, I'll give you a, a temporary log into the server and go look at it and verify that there's a sucking log, even though I just proved it to you. <sighs> Somebody said, well, we don't trust you and Brax me. So we're not going to use Brax me because we don't trust you. It's like, suck. Brax me is open source already. What do you people want? I open source backs me and you still don't use it. And WhatsApp is not open source and you don't use it. And you use it. Has anyone open source Facebook? Is Google open sourced? Oh no. Oh, we're going to use that even though uh, we don't trust Google. We're going to use it anyway. But we don't trust Rob, so we're not going to use yours. So we don't trust you. Uh, it's like, oh my gosh. You know, it's a little bit illogical here, okay? So, yeah, if I, if I, after speaking here for years about these top, well, you're probably new, so you don't know me, but for those of you who followed me, you already know you trust me because I've been around, and if I'm going to cheat somebody or do something wrong to somebody, in five years that I've been doing this, you would have known that already. And somehow, nobody's come around and said, I was cheated by Rob. Rob revealed my secrets. Some of you talk to me about the most personal things, and I have never revealed anything. Somebody said, well, you know, how do we know we're not dealing with the government? Well, I will tell you right now, there's been no warrants, no requests from information, no uh, um, law enforcement agency or three-letter agency in the U.S. or any other country have asked for any information from me for any purpose. And if you want a canary, just ask me that on a broadcast as a group on some regular basis so I don't forget and then I'll answer you right then and say yes uh, yep uh, nobody's asked me for anything and if I don't answer you it's a canary if I don't answer you if I evade the question then you got your answer Jacob does trust the word of other VPN companies. Why don't you trust the word of other VPN companies? I don't know what you expect this trust to be if you don't even understand the technology. By the way, all VPNs use the same software. We use OpenVPN. And by the way, OpenVPN can't actually log individual transactions, like what website you visit and all that. It doesn't actually do that. The only thing that uh, OpenVPN would log if you turn on the log is actually your IP address and the timestamps. It doesn't actually see the traffic. You'd need to do something else or modify OpenVPN to not work like that. So when, when VPN companies say we don't have any logs and I just stated to you over and over, 
that Brax does not have any logs. And I don't, it's not important. If you don't want to buy my VPN, I don't care. <clears throat> you some other, if you want to trust somebody else, I don't know why you would trust them, but go trust somebody else if you think they're more trustworthy. I don't know why you should trust them. <clears throat> but if you want to trust them, go trust them. The point is we all use the same software, so there's really not much information, even if you collected it. I can't believe that. You know, it's like, oh, I guess I'm going to trust NordVPN. What the fuck? You, you don't even understand the scams that these VPN companies run because they're so big. You know, uh, the, uh, you know in these companies, they, they don't make much money on the VPN on a per VPN basis. They make money... Uh, sometimes only a couple of bucks uh, a subscription because they deal with so much volume and they crowd you into these servers and they say, we're going to have a sale. We're going to offer it to you for half price. But what they're really saying is we're going to double the number of people on the same docking server. So their cost is the same. That's the kind of trickery they can do, which I never do. I spend, you know, an expensive amount of money running servers that are, are not at peak capacity, not even near peak capacity, and uh, to assure that we never get overloaded. And, and you're saying, well, I'm going to go with the spammer companies that people that you know, have all these uh, spam clientele and, uh, and all the marketing tricks. That, well, if that's what you want, it's what you want. Eh? You know, it do doesn't matter. If you fall for that, then there's nothing I can do. And I'm not going to try to compete with that. It doesn't matter. Because I make this. This can use NordVPN or PIA. This doesn't have to be my VPN. So I'll gladly refer you to some of those companies. I'll give you a referral link so that I can get some profit out of you using some other VPNs because I don't really care. But I'm doing my VPN to give you a better service. I'd hardly make any money from the VPN. If you ask me if I uh, was given a warrant of any sort and I don't answer, that's a canary signal that I did get a warrant. So if I don't answer, it's because I'm legally not able to answer. That should be the clue. I don't need to state it. Okay, so that's what I'm suggesting to you. If you want to ask me, I don't want to spend time. Somebody said, why don't you put a canary message on BraxMe and all this? And, you know, I know that you're not going to look at the canary message. So I'm going to waste time doing that on a regular basis. And then I'll forget. You know, I'll be busy. And then I'll forget to update the canary. And then you'll think that there's a canary. And you're going to go publicly say, oh, my gosh, Rob got a warrant. Uh, that's a problem with canaries. It's a time waster when you don't have staff. I don't have people to work for me. So do I, I don't have time to, to maintain a canary. So, uh, so uh, let's just do it the easy way. I'm on the live stream here every week and ask me every week. Uh, my my uh, VPN is $89 a year. Up to six devices with Tor included and, and ad blocking, ad blocking included as well using pie hole. That's all included. And then compatible, obviously, with the VPN. And that includes Tor. There's a Byte Store. So the service is very unusual because it has all these extras. The extras are, it comes with Tor. Uh, so if you want to switch to Tor, you can do so at any time. And ad blocking is an option as well. You should do an interview to crypto ladies with two crypto ladies. I don't know. Nobody watches my uh, crypto. I did, you know, nobody watches my crypto videos. That is cheap, but I don't live. I U.S. Oh, USA. You're not in the, you, you don't live in the USA. Uh, I have many people don't live in the USA. Can I use my PFSense router? Uh, <laughs> use your PFSense router. You can do whatever you want. 
but this is a gigabit wired router. No, I don't have any thoughts on, on an, any other email product. I think I answered that. Fake name. Seen it. Uh, like uh, maybe some volunteers. Uh, let's see. So Jellyfish asked a question, is in more people in a VPN server better, more obfuscation? To a point, to a point. Now what happened now is the big ones, Nord and PIA, have thousands of people on the same Zucking server, thousands, many thousands. So what happens is that you got many, many thousands with the same Zucking IP address. So now those are now flagged in, in uh, Google and Amazon and so on. They actually spot those. You can see it. Actually, I can see it on even on YouTube when uh, my my subscriber counts go down uh, every time I sold a VPN because then it matches the same IP address. Well, Amazon actually stated that they uh, track that, that if you use an affiliate program, you know, where you uh, have an affiliate program and then you recommend something and then if the link is used and clicked on, you get a little bit of credit, right? So what some scammers will do is get an affiliate program and they click it themselves. And then they're gonna use a VPN when they do the clicking. Well, what happens is the affiliate program then spots that's because the, the IP address is used by many people that it must be fake and therefore you must be trying to do some unusual thing to make your click more uh, active and that's the uh, the flag so that's the problem with these big ones there, there's too many people on the same IP address. they have just too many people per IP address they're so large so you don't actually want that and that's why you start seeing more capture codes when I was in PIA they blocked the email so if you want to go to PIA good you know they'll block your email uh, the reason they blocked the email was there's so many spammers on PIA. So because there's so many people who are such bad guys, they actually now give you so much capture codes when they detect you're on a major VPN. They don't do it on mine. But if I run uh, PIA, I get it all the time. So that signal to you that somebody's already spotted that it's, you're on one of those target VPNs. And that's why I don't want that. It puts a red flag. The whole point is to be private, not to have that kind of red flag. And say, oh, you, you are, you know, it's kind of like using Proton Mail. You actually put a flag on yourself. So when you use BraxMe, I'm mean, sorry, when you use Bytes VPN, you know, especially since we change our IP addresses, you know, fairly regularly, like with this new server, it's a new IP address. Uh, so it's actually not uh, not spotted at all. Have you used ham on Linux yet? SDR. Uh, FL Digi, yes. That's what you use. FL Digi and CWGET and things like that. Uh, but to be honest with you, a lot of the uh, ham apps are Windows. So that's kind of a pain. You know, I don't know why they prefer that. That's correct, Jellyfish. If one of the subscribers, so every time that you buy my VPN, I lose a subscriber. That is, that is actually true. And I know that because sometimes there's no activity and I can see there's no traffic and then I sell the VPN and shortly after the count goes down. And this was more obvious when I had few fewer. But back when I was on my first thousand subs, that was very obvious. Now it's not because you know I got you know 12, 12, 5, 12 subs, so it's harder to to see that. Uh, but you can see my numbers go up and down. Now some people just go down because they don't like my videos. Um, a lot of my live streams, I get I lose. Uh, I lose some people on the live stream, you know, some people don't like me, so they 
say, well, he's not what I expected. I don't want to talk to this. I, want to, I don't want to see this guy anymore. So then they unsubscribe. So if, <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, J. Peter, I appreciate I take your tech lawyer advice above everyone else. I wish there was more people like you. Uh, thank you, J. Peter. The, the thing, guys, is I do this as a service. I don't make money. I need to make some more money to, to make a living from doing this. So that's, you know, that's why I make products that protect you like this in my um, in the new, you know, Braxrom de Google phone that I sell to make sure that you're safe because that's where most of the spying happens. It happens on these phones. Okay. It's not even opened yet. This is uh, the box is brand new. So that's what I do. I make these, you know, and I make the routers and I have the VPN products and so on. And I, I do all these products uh, uh, thinking about things that will help you achieve privacy because I can't find a good alternative out there. If I can find something out there that already exists, I'll just refer you to that. Now, if you subscribe off the VPN, when you watch YouTube while on the VPN and logged in, it will, un it will unsubscribe you. So pretty much every user on Brax has been unsubscribed from YouTube already. Okay, so, you know, it's unfortunate, but that's that's the way it is. So, uh, back to what we're talking about. So the whole idea is, if you make sure that you do disinformation, because many of you cannot lie, you, you just don't understand that the internet is not an entity. Uh, you know, the internet... You should lie on the internet. I'm going to tell you something funny, because uh, uh, our friend here, Huge D Byte, again, he's not here tonight, but he's uh, he's so full of stories that you know are just amazing stories. And so he told me one a couple of days ago. Uh, that was funny because it shows how extreme he is. So he wants to do two-factor authentication without a phone number. And the way I did it in the video was I used a one-time SIM card, paid $10 for it using Ting.com. Uh, if you want to do this and use Ting.com, please give me a, use a referral link. So so they give me a little prize for referring you. Doesn't change your price. But Ting.com is great for one-time burners for two-factor authentication because it only costs 10 bucks. So you pay 10 bucks for it, use it once, Dump it, and that's it. <clears throat> Don't use it again. Okay? So, uh, so anyway, I was using, uh, I was using, uh, 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 do you ship in EU? Um, not, not right now. <laughs> not right now. You can't ship in the EU right now. I can't, you know, there's many places I can't ship to, so it's really, I'm kind of stuck, you know, with, a lot of you ordered something and I can't ship it. So uh, certain countries are kind of problematic and certain are not. So it depends on the country. Anyway, I don't know why you can't ship to Hong Kong, for example, because I'm sending it there, not from there coming in here. Now we have more cases in, in uh, even in Los Angeles, there are more cases than uh, Hong Kong. So... So we're actually worse. What earthquake? Oh, hey, we fool can. Hey, hey, buddy. Uh, when was this earthquake? Did it just happen while I was broadcasting? Darn, I didn't do a uh, prepper prepper video. Uh, anyway, uh, well, Mary Ann, go to Brax me and uh, you know discuss there. Yeah, that well, Belgium, France. Yeah, that's the worst right now. <laughs> So we have to wait. We have to wait. So uh, I, I have all these countries where, you know, I have like outstanding orders from Sweden, uh, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Canada. Uh, what did I miss? Uh, Portugal, uh, India. And I can't ship. Can't ship. So I'm going to go broke because I can't ship. You know, you guys want to buy and I can't ship. 
So fortunately, you don't have to buy this from me. You can buy, you can buy the hardware for now because I can't ship it. You can buy this hardware in your local area and then you can download the software from me and then burn your own card for 99 bucks. So you can just build your own for $99. And then and then you can do the VPN subscription for $89 and then that will be that'll be it. Hey Simon. Okay, so um it's at 7. Oh my. Uh, I didn't feel it at seven. I didn't feel anything at seven. So back to what I'm talking about, which is uh, which is dis disinformation. If you build your life on the basis of disinformation, you have a different mindset. So so huge D Byte actually told me the story. It was kind of interesting. So he said he needed phone numbers for uh, two factor authentication. And so what he does, he goes around anywhere and collects phone numbers, whatever he can, and then he sets up a fake account. For example, if he spots a phone booth, he goes to the phone booth and sets up a fake account on the phone booth. Using, he authenticates using the phone booth and then forgets about it. And then uses it temporarily, and then when it's done, then he deletes that and moves on to the next one. And one of the things he, he did, he said, was he went to... Uh, uh, telephone stores where they sell telephones and some of them have a phone number on it and if if they actually put a sim card for testing he'll actually write down the sim card number and do you know and do validation right on the phone to validate like a text message or whatever and then use that again he was collecting all this for temporary use so he had like a he has this mindset which is kind of extreme i can't do that kind of work i mean that's that's too extreme but he was spending so much time in this information uh, so that everything about his internet activity is always obscured. So, I'm not spending so much time on hiding what I do as much as spending my time making it useless. So, so I, I already made a, uh, I, James already have a video on, uh, uh, on, uh, w well, you can't because it's, I can't teach you how to do Google. It's, it's by phone. It's very, very difficult, okay? So it's a, kind of a difficult process. So I kind of give you a general thing there, what I do. But <clears throat> let me just be the one to do it for you because it's it's kind of, you know, it's it's too complex. I mean, you wouldn't even, uh, you wouldn't even, uh, uh, yeah, you wouldn't even get it in, in that, you know, uh, there's too many steps. If there are 100 steps, what are you going to do? Are you going to watch the video? King Singh, the answer is at the beginning of the video, which is Zuck No. Okay, so so uh, if you spend all of your time creating this information and creating, making sure that the information that is seen about you is is not something can be profiled because it's inaccurate, either through the use of a VPN or through your own efforts at at uh, mixing up what you do, then uh, you're gonna win. I actually uh, been thinking about creating some sort of disinformation tool like a website, and so difficult to do this, where you go to a website and then the website creates fake traffic and makes it seem like we're actually doing something, you know, to confuse the issue. As an example is, uh, wouldn't be nice to make disinformation about Politics. So, if you are a Democrat, uh, wouldn't be nice if you, while you're sleeping, your phone is sending out all this traffic that you're a Republican or vice versa. Uh, that would be, you know, that's what you want. It's something that makes a data. If if I can't tell that what your political party is because you know I'm confused by your messaging, then the AI will fail, and that is really. The uh, the thing that you need to learn from me of value is it's not that you know you have to hide like Snowden. We don't have you, you don't have to be a snow to live like a Snowden with no phone because that's the only way to hide is to have no phone. Okay, you're gonna be on tour only, no phone, and even on tour you have to break up your devices in certain ways. It's gonna be very very complicated, 
and um, and you have to be very concerned about you know where you are on the internet. That is not what I'm trying to teach you because that's kind of hard, and and it's not necessary to do that. So I don't believe all these people, you know, hated one and everyone else who who tries to make you like Snowden because it doesn't apply. What you need is disinformation. If your life is disinformation, if your device is disinformation, the data is useless. Google's not going to get anything from you. Uh, Degoogling a Pixel 2, I believe you have to use uh, uh, Pixel 2 is, um, let's see, Samsung is E Foundation. Pixel 2 is, uh, which company does Pixel 2? Somebody can tell me. Uh, is it Copperhead? I, I can't remember. But I know E is Samsung Galaxies. I make uh, Motorola Motorola phones. So I, I'm doing the Moto G7, G7 plays. That's what I do. And then uh, E Foundation does... Uh, does uh, uh, Samsung's and I'll resell E Foundation as well, and uh, 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 Samsung Galaxy S9, I believe, is uh, E Foundation. So yeah, so it depends depends on who made the ROM for that phone. So uh, obviously Samsung. It's more expensive. It's a lot more expensive than the phones I sell. And that's the reason I don't do it, because it's too costly to buy. So uh, uh, my, my phones are 249 to 299 If uh, And then my Ubuntu phones are only uh, 150 to 170 for Ubuntu Touch Linux phones. So, so I want to keep it in that price range, you know, uh, 300 or below. So a Samsung Galaxy will run you, you know, 500 bucks, five to 600, up to 700. So that's why I don't concentrate on that. So yes, you can go to eFoundation for those. So Pixel, uh, the uh, de-Google, it's, it's, I'm running a blank right now, but yes, one of the, uh, one of the ROM makers, uh, I know, uh, Graphene OS, I believe is the one graphene is the one that does uses pixels. So if you want a pixel, use graphene. Okay. Uh, uh, you're waiting for the Librem Five. Good luck on that. I'm waiting for my Librem Five, but I don't really care anymore because I have I have a Pine phone. The Pine Phone and Librem Five, they're not ready, you know. The uh, the Pine Phone, I, I keep making trying to make a video about the progress so far because you can call on a Pine Phone now, but it's still so buggy in in certain ways. So it's not really. Uh, I, I want to see some more progress before I make a video. I couldn't even get the phone to work consistently. So let me give it another month and then let's see if I can make a video by then but at the moment you know I'll just waste my time make the video and there's too many flaws okay so we'll wait next month to see how far about the touch gets uh, the Motorola is from uh, 249 to uh, 299 they're and they're new well they're open box but you know, they're obviously mint. They look new. Okay, I, I don't sell any that are... Uh, if it's flawed, I return them. One plus one phones are kind of expensive now. You know, they're hard to find. And I have one, and it's kind of been problematic for me. So I haven't been able to do anything with my one plus one. My one plus one is Googled. So I don't want to use it. It's running Lineage OS Google, and I can't uninstall it. Because, you know, it was my first try, and I made a mistake, and it was very difficult to undo it, and I can't undo it now. 
So, is it possible to have a legal public name? It's kind of hard, but yes, yeah. Uh, you can do DBA, set up a corporation. There are certain things you got to know, Jay, that, you know, it is not illegal to use a fake name. It's only illegal in certain contexts like taxes uh, and so on. It's not illegal to use a real na uh, a fake name. So if you use a fake name for uh, social media, who fucking cares? If you use a fake name even for, for business, it's called a DBA. Then you could put under under the umbrella of a corporation, and then uh, you know uh, and that's more difficult to hide. But uh, <clears throat> you can make it so it's a lot of work to go figure it out. Are you responsible for the price hike? Uh, probably. I probably raised the price of Nexus Five because I, you know, I bought so many Nexus Fives. I still have some now. Now nobody wants them. <laughs> now I still have the Nexus 5s. I bought a lot of Nexus 5s. I bought every Nexus. Some of you are bidding against me on on uh, the internet. And now now I have a overstock of Nexus 5s. So I'm not going to be buying Nexus 5 for a while, but I'm I want to uh concentrate on newer phones. Uh, which is a little bit different. So the reason I, I do uh, the Moto G7s is because they are actually quite a high-quality phone for the price. They're, they're very good phones. I, I mean, it's uh, I use, I'm using it to replace an iPhone, for goodness sakes. And I don't notice anything better than you know, on the iPhone that I need to get concerned myself about. So... So basically, I've replaced my iPhone with a Google, I'm sorry, with a Motorola uh, Play, which is about the same size. The screen and everything, the CPU is, is comparable. And the iPhone has a better camera, but I don't really care about the camera, so it doesn't matter because I have a fancy camera like the one you're seeing here. I have several fancy cameras. I don't need the uh, camera on an iPhone. So anyway... Um, so the, the, the idea then back to my thing about privacy, because I can't really get into more detail because we're out of time is, is to focus on making sure that you're emitting inconsistent data constantly so that they don't know who you are. They don't know what you are and never use your real identity. And, and by doing that and never have your same IP address, cause that's kind of a match and worry about device fingerprints on this. Because you can do all your precautions and nobody tells you that the main thing that they're tracking is device fingerprints and a MAC address of this device, which is constant. This doesn't change. Which is why, you know, you may need more than one phone. Isn't compatible with eFoundation. Uh, I think Samsung 9, if I recall, is as far as eFoundation does. Is it simple and easy process for a beginner? Hell no, King Singh. No, none of this is easy. There's some discussions on Brax. You can go uh, watch people struggle with it. It's very hard. It's very hard. It requires so much experience. And uh, the first phone took me uh, two weeks to learn full time. The first phone, I mean, think about the hours. The number of hours to, to just, you know, do one phone. I made so many mistakes. I, I basically bricked the phone. So if you don't know how to unbrick it, then that's it. You toss your money away. So it's not worth it if you're going to do one for yourself. It's not worth it. Just pay somebody that knows how to do it. Okay? So it's not worth it. Trust me. It's just too much. There's so much specialized knowledge. And so, you know, let people who know how to do it, do it. Uh, the, what is it? Uh, the real niggly people in the tech lore Discord were showing me some stuff on the S10e, I think it is. Well, I haven't seen any videos on it. Yeah, so uh, it is not usually good to, to do it on a very brand new phone. Uh, 
you know, the phone has to be aged a little bit to be safer, plus the price has to go down. So I don't, I don't, uh, so I selected this phone because this is from last year. So this phone is uh, less than a year old. <clears throat> that's, that's good. The G7 is 299 the G7 Play here is 249 so this is 249 the G7, uh, which is better, I have to admit, is 299 Okay, this, I, I, this is what I'm using is a play, this one, which is 249 Uh, <clears throat> but obviously the G7 is better uh, for a couple of reasons. The G7 has... Uh, 64 gigabytes, this one is 32. The G7 uses Lineage OS, which is uh, uh, official support. So it has on-the-air updates. So it, it, it has automatic updates, which this one doesn't have. The advantage of this one is that I flash it with Android 10. So this actually gets a newer OS. So that's the advantage of the cheaper one to play. And there's a couple of minor bugs in it that you wouldn't worry about. Uh, the, the one bug, for example, is the fingerprint sensor doesn't work. Who cares? I don't use it, so it doesn't matter. C comes very configured. It's, it's set to use. De-Google. There's, by the way, how does the G7 have Ethernet? You mean like plugged in, like uh, uh, OTG? USB OTG? I actually don't know, but I, I would imagine so. I would imagine so. A dumb phone for emergencies? For emergencies, I use the Linux phone. The G7 is, uh, is you know, super high, you know, high powered, everything complete, everything running. And uh, most apps run. Got everything running. Uh, the only thing that doesn't run on it are Google. So anything that has Google on it, Google Play, Google Store, none of those obviously are going to be on there. Waze runs. Uh, everything runs. But how does that work? Again, you, you know, part of this discussion I want to make clear. A de-Google phone runs from this information. What makes a de-Google phone different? Well, I have never logged in to my de-Google phone. My D Google phone is unidentified. It doesn't. It has a new fingerprint. It doesn't match to any identity. I've never put a Google ID on there. So Google is tra tracking it. Not like an Ubuntu Touch phone. An Ubuntu Touch Google can't track. Google is in fact tracking a D Google phone, except the identity is wrong. That's the difference of a D Google phone versus a Linux phone. And I'm going to make it. That's my next video. Maybe by Sunday. Okay. So, what's the difference? A de-googled phone, a de-googled phone is still being tracked to limited degree, not, not too much because it doesn't have Wi-Fi scanning and all that. But uh, they do have some way of doing telemetry on it when you're using some apps. So, it depends on the apps you're using. So, but because the apps don't have an identity, so the actual uh, username doesn't exist. It's spoofed. It's spoofed by by some spoofing things you put on there. So you, so I load software that spoofs your identity on uh, a de-Google phone. It has to start from that. You cannot start from a normal phone and then try to remove Google. You can't do it. You got to do it in reverse. You got to start from anything with no Google on it at all ever from the beginning. And then um, when you download apps, there's no identity. So it knows there's somebody using the phone. It doesn't know who you are. And you will never have an opportunity to put it in because there's no spot for it. So that's what uh, that's what de googling does. An Ubuntu Touch phone, a Linux phone like a Nexus Five, um, in the future, and in the future, a Pine phone, and an even more future, a Librem Five. Those are different because there's absolutely no tracking on those. Google and uh, Google can't track. Any, Google, Apple, nobody can track except for the government. Nobody can track a, a Linux phone. So Linux phone, the only issue is government. K 
King Singh has a Linux phone for me, yes. So, so the Linux phone is the absolute top in security. You may need another phone <clears throat> so that you have the ability to go, you know, different levels. Uh, like I do, I have two. Actually, more than two because I keep replacing them. So what I might do is use it for a week and then sell it to you. So, you know, I may have only used it for a week and then I erase all the data and start fresh. So it's really sold to you with this information. Okay, so that's the trick with, uh, with this information. A Google phone, de-Googled, is still tracked by Google, but without any kind of identity to it, the data is useless. And that's what you want to do. Yes, a white dealer also has a uh, 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 Nexus 5 Linux phone. Many of you do. I've sold many Linux phones, Nexus 5s, many of them. I actually uh, I probably caused a market rise in the prices because I bought so many of them. And, uh, you know, fortunately, there's a lot more stock of the uh, Motos. These I can buy without affecting the market. Probably millions of these. They're very easy to buy. So that, you know, I can build stock very fast. Can you build a virtual Google phone inside the Linux phone like on a Linux desktop? Can you build a, I don't know what that means. Do you use burners and where to get one? No, you don't use burner phones. You just use one-time use SIM cards. So I use Ting.com. I use it to, for, uh, to set up a Google Voice with, uh, with uh, a temporary SIM card. Then I throw away the SIM card. Once I validate the Google Voice, then I use Google Voice and forget about the SIM card. That's it. Then I don't use the phone. I'm only voice over IP. Okay, so that's what I do with Google Voice. Meaning you use Google Voice for this information. Okay, so that's the and so so uh, burner phones are useless for trying to hide from governments, but they're good for you know one time use for authenticating a device. Okay, so so again, um, you know I'm a little uh, I'm not as extreme as uh, my friend who goes to phone stores and gets phone numbers and tries to validate accounts through. Uh, phone numbers he finds anywhere. I don't do that. I'm happy to pay for it. What I actually like to do is do a SIM card exchange. If any of you have SIM cards, I have you know older SIM cards and we can do a SIM card exchange and then we can use each other's SIM cards. That would be the best because we all paid for it differently. If we mix up all the SIM cards and nobody's going to know anything. So my SIM cards, I have a stack of them from Net10 and from uh, Ting, but mostly Ting. I, I got a lot of them. Because I intended to kind of like use a different SIM card every week. <clears throat> okay. With a uh, with a de Google phone, the uh, triangulation is lim more limited than with a Google phone. A Google phone can track you constantly. This one is recording. This is not a Google phone. A Google phone will record your actions without any location rights, 24-7, anywhere your phone goes, it knows, okay? A de-Google phone doesn't have that code. So it can only use Wi-Fi triangulation if you turn on location. If you turn off the service and you can actually control the fake location service that it runs on a de-Google phone, you can actually shut it down completely. So there's a fake location server uh, that only uses GPS and it's on um, the phones that I sell you. Fake location. So no triangulation, GPS only, and you turn it off. So all the services, they don't go to the Google code for it. They go to this spoofing code that runs location services. So it's not actually Google. And because it's spoofed, it doesn't give enough information. So my de Google phones are excellent for use, for active use for people who need to use apps but want it to be safe. 
and they want to use a lot of apps. If so, then you need to use a Google phone. Now, if you want to be ultra safe, you should stick to an, a, a Linux phone. Heard military sim has no IMEI, but no idea of true. No. No. You can't use a... You can't use a SIM that's not given to you by your carrier. The carrier code is in the SIM. So if you're going to use a military SIM, then you're going to use a military network. Okay? So no. no, You can't play a game with SIM cards. The only thing you can play with is use it once. Forget... Je oh, no. Forget satellite phone data. There's no encryption of satellite phones. You know... Uh, all the satellite data goes to San Diego. So the, the three-letter agencies had just have to tap into your unencrypted messages on one place, which is in San Diego, and listen to all the conversations going on on satellite radio. There's nothing anonymous about that. Forget that. I want to use it for crypto wallets. So I use my... Uh, I, I actually put my new incognito wallet software on this iPhone and on my uh, uh, Moto Play, so on, on, on the one here. So uh, works great. Yeah, I like it. It's, uh, I'm, uh, it's really convenient. I wish they have a way to do it you know, without an app. So at the moment, you have to use an app, but it works. Satellite is unencrypted, of course. I don't have any good opinions on 5G. <laughs> I have a video on it, but suffice it to say, the tracking will increase 100x. So you don't want to do that. So, uh, guys, uh, I've been doing this for two hours and a half, and uh, I didn't see anybody hit the like. I mean, we've had hundreds of people have been here. And you must not like the video. So if you like it, hit the like. And I hope you learned a lot because, uh, you know, this has been a, a very intense kind of video here. So I'm going to try to do a short video explaining again Uh why there's a difference between an Ubuntu Touch Linux phone or other Linux phones versus a de-Googled phone, because that's not clear. So some of you will make the decision that you cannot do certain things without a standard Android-like phone. And some of you will say, no, I, I don't need that. Or some of you will say, I need two phones, and I actually am one of those that will need two phones. So, especially since I'm a developer. So, I use two phones. And uh, and I run my uh, BraxMe app. As you know, I have a s encrypted app, <clears throat> open source, that runs on iPhones, Androids, de-Googled phones, and your desktop. So, join us on Braxatme and talk there. Okay? <clears throat> I'm so easy to find on BraxMe if you, you know, if you think I'm unreachable, it's actually I'm extremely easy to find on BraxMe. Don't try to email me or do anything like that because I won't respond to you. But e very easy to find me on BraxMe. That's correct, Sim. Sim said facial recognition does not work with sunglasses. Yes. You thought of a logo for me? You think, uh, you think, uh, let, let's not talk about uh, that AX or I'm going to get demonetized. <laughs> they actually have a rule on YouTube that uh, I can't talk about uh, things like that. I mean, even if I mention it, I actually get, uh, actually get zapped. They actually demonetized my video just because I compared, you know, Facebook to the current threat. Even though I'm not talking about the current threat, I'm just talking about Facebook. But I use an analogy, and because of the analogy, they actually demonetized my video. And fortunately, they uh, released a demonetization, but it was kind of a pain. 
If I was to send you my used Google Pixel 2, would it be worth the Googling and how much would you charge? Um, uh, I don't have any experience with it, uh, um, Jay. Uh, typically, I charge you know around a hundred dollars to do something that I know. If I know it, if I don't know it, I may not want to do it because it takes so much time to research. So I'd rather stick to selling what I already uh, uh, know because if I have to support it, you know, then I know how these work. I, I can recover this even from a brick brick situation. And, uh, and, and I know intensely how it works because I use it every day. So, so these, I make a markup of about, you know, a hundred bucks for every phone that I sell. And it, on an hourly basis, then it's actually embarrassing how little money I make because it's very difficult to do. I mean, it doesn't take a few minutes to do. So, uh, so it's actually not worth it in, in a way, but you know, I got to make a living. Okay. So, you know, it's, it's not a lot of money if you, Talk about on an hourly basis how much time it takes to do it. So, can you do in can if you don't know anything? Could you do it in one day? Hell no. No, no chance. Okay, if you don't know anything, uh, like I did, it took me, and I'm pretty expert. I already know how to do this for other phones. It took me two weeks for one phone. Because there's not a lot of information. You got to dig it out. Okay? You got to dig it out. It's not, exp nobody explains anything. Sometimes you got to look at the source code and see what the suck, why doesn't it work? Then you got to look, look at the source code and see what's not working. And, you know, it, it takes a bit of global knowledge to go figure that out. And, you know, fortunately, I can look at the, the uh, Android source code and see, okay, why is that not working? And I don't want to have to keep doing that on any new phone. It's a lot of work. So, so uh, you know, just uh, help the channel and have me do it and, uh, you know, support the channel. Now, if you're saying if it's a Pixel 2 better than a, the Moto, I, I'm going to tell you, this is probably better than your Moto. This is, I mean, your Pixel. This is uh, sell your Pixel and just get this. You can sell your Pixel. Okay? It's easy to sell a Pixel. Just sell it. I have a Pixel. I don't like working on it. Okay, this is a lot nicer. This is only a few months old. This is not even a year old phone. The model, not this phone, but I mean, the model is not even a year old. The reason they're dumping this now because it's 2020 and they, they have a new model. So uh, these are not used. They're just dumping it because they have a new model. Well, fine, I'll buy it. Android is uh, Android itself. I'm sh uh, Android is in C or C++, but then uh, uh, just like Linux, but then uh, uh, Android apps use Java, a special kind of Java that's made by uh, uh, Google, uh, made to run on the uh, Android environment. It's a special implementation of Java if you break your phone Rob's phone looks cheap exactly if you the risk since I bricked it and I'm an expert and I bricked it and you know and one of you just told me that you hello Peter so uh, when you uh, actually you know see the people talking about it on Brax me and they tried it on a Moto Power, which G7 Power, which I don't sell, and I don't support it because I I know that it's kind of difficult to do, so I didn't mess with that, and I don't want to support Power because it's too risky. So I I don't want to do something that I I uh, can't guarantee that I can fix. So uh, so I'm gonna stick to what I know. So uh, at a good price. The, the the nice thing is that the Motos are such great phones. And they're actually, you know, for the price, 
you're you're not going to get disappointed that you have some crappy kind of phone. It's you know, they're very reasonably priced. Imagine that I'm selling you this one for two forty nine, and it's the phone is really nice. I mean, it's it's nice, very fast, and it's on. It's like I said, it's it's uh, just a few months old. The phone model. So yeah, so you know, it's not like me paying fourteen hundred dollars for this iPhone. Suck! Why did I do that? How many of those phones can I? You know, fourteen hundred dollars for this. This is not any better. Suck this! Spying on me like, you know, crazy. The privacy phone from Apple supposedly safe. Uh, I only found out today that unless you're logged into YouTube, you can't hit the like button or make book. <laughs> Look who's a boy. Come on. Um, uh, uh, hope you are. The, Peter, it's uh, tough for you are too, I'm sure. So yeah, LA has uh, LA has a lot of cases now. So I think LA uh, is up to twelve thousand cases, and I believe we have two hundred plus deaths so far. So I mean, as a percentage of population, it's it's not you know it's not terrible, but I'm starting to know people who have the virus. So before you didn't know anyone, but now I can say, yep, I know several that have it. So I'm going to stay home. A review of phone videos for potential buyers to understand why they should buy your custom phone with help sales. Uh, not necessarily, Sim, because I actually recommend certain phones. I, if you uh, want a Pixel, I'm going to recommend to use Graphene OS. Uh, if you want to use Samsung, you, I recommend uh, eFoundation. I, I want to even resell it for you. I'll resell their phones if you want. Uh, I'm happy to do that. They're they're okay. They're doing close to what I'm doing. Okay, we're doing close to the same thing. So if you actually examine their phones and mine, they're just, they're close. They're just you know my, minor choice differences, but in general they're close. So it's more about the model. So uh, so I wouldn't say that you know if I'm going to tell you right now, Graphene OS E Foundation and mine are very close in what we do. I looked at them and we do pretty much the same stuff. Okay, so although, you know, somebody might put different graphics and so on on, on each one, in reality, the, the use of the phone is pretty much the same and the same safety level. So I am confident that the safety level on eFoundation, mine, and graphene will all be about equal. Okay, I don't think any one of them is any better. So I will ha be happy to recommend those. And the only reason I I, uh, uh, I don't sell them to you is because I just want to concentrate on one kind of phone. Otherwise, I can sell you eFoundation and I can sell you Graphene since obviously I can install it myself. Okay? So so pick the ones you want. I, hopefully, I'm, I'm going to do it by price since mine are cheaper. Okay, so we, we all make about the same margins on each phone. So mine, mine's going to be a little cheaper because of the bottle. So uh, more, I think more, uh, more value, uh, more bang for the buck with the model I chose. So that's, that's the only difference. Other than that, I wouldn't tell you to, if you want to really use a Samsung and you want to pay 700 bucks for the phone, yeah, I, I don't care. Go go use um, e foundation. That's fine. I wouldn't deny you that. Okay. Read up marketing strategy. No, I don't need to read read up on marketing strategy. <clears throat> not, I'm not going to be big. I know it. I'm just uh, trying to do a service for you. It's not about me. Okay. So it's not about me. It's about you. I'm doing uh, a service. So. Hopefully, people like Kelp will get a the Google phone since he loves Android. Instead, instead of trolling me, you could say, you know what, Rob? Uh, you know, I don't like your uh, 
your discussions, but maybe uh, I'll benefit from a de-Googled phone. Maybe he would actually support me. Not likely. Anyway, uh, so I'm, uh, I'm, you know, obviously I, many of you don't don't have jobs, but you're gonna get a, you're gonna get a good a big big paycheck soon from uh, from Uncle Sam. So, uh, so uh, you say, well, what do I spend his money on? Maybe you all want new phones. I don't trust a BlackBerry Passport. That's still Android, King Singh. But uh, in in a lot of ways, I mean, they're they're uh, still you know. Uh, obviously, they're not as functional as a newer phone. So it, it's again, if if you're gonna think about you know what what you use the phone for, and you're you're uh, you know there are different grades of security at any at any moment in time. But obviously the difference is the Google phone is actually pretty safe, not because not because uh, uh, it doesn't run Android, but because it doesn't have any identity. It doesn't have any identity. So that's why, you know, it, it succeeds by disinformation. It doesn't succeed by hiding your all of your data. It hides a large chunk of it. But it doesn't succeed by hiding all of your data, but it makes it become useless, and that makes it win. But sometimes you need more than that. For example, if I'm going to go to a protest, would I rather take a uh, Google phone, I mean, a de Google phone or an Ubuntu phone, a Linux phone? I'd take the Linux phone. Where am I? I'm in Los Angeles. There is a global stay-at-home order. Don't leave the broadcast yet. <laughs> Hello, Junie, and do you any feature phones have privacy? Symbian. Um, a lot of feature phones are Kai OS. Kai OS is actually Google now. So th I don't know what they do with that. So without any information. It's Google now. Before, it wasn't. Is the camera good on it? Yes, it's uh, enough resolution, but uh, some people say the quality of the uh, picture is not as good as the iPhone, uh, like, say, an iPhone. So, obviously, that's probably true. But it's high resolution. It's good enough for me. Can you touch up on fighting font fingerprinting? Uh, that's actually used for browser fingerprinting. That's why you use browser isolation. Font print fingerprinting is a very big part of browser fingerprinting. I track fonts. Uh, a e-foundation only sells fonts in Europe. Uh, no, they will sell here. I was talking to them already. Maybe they haven't started operations yet, but uh, they're planning to sell here. And I will resell it for them. They're good. They're you know it's just more expensive. So it would be uh, it's you know it ties up too much capital when you sell a five hundred. What you sell a six ninety nine phone and you only make a hundred bucks. So you're tying up 500 bucks to make 100. Well, you know, that's a little hard. So that's why I don't like those. Mesh network is not growing, no. I love the 9900 9, King Sing. I, you know, I sold mine. That's, those are great looking phones too. And you know what? And they're actually really good for playing music in my car because uh, the Bluetooth worked perfectly in my car on the... Blackberry Bull 9900. I, I love that. But, you know, times change. And um, my main gripe of the Ubuntu Touch Nexus 5 is the Bluetooth. 
because I gave that up when I had when I had the 9900. So, E Foundation is a, a degoogled uh, OS like mine, what I call Brax ROM. So E sells their own, and uh, which is a variation on Lineage OS, just like mine. So it's pretty much the same thing. So they package it, thinking about privacy, just like I do, and we do pretty much the same same things. But they've concentrated on on doing it for uh, Galaxy Samsung Galaxy phones, and I'm doing it for Moto G7s. Yeah, 9900s are you know for phone only use and occasional web, very occasional. My my main gripe with the 9900 BlackBerry was the uh, HTTPS sites don't work. Which ROM do you recommend? I recommend mine, obviously, uh, which is based off Lineage OS uh, for Moto G7s. So they're based on Lineage OS, which is, you know, really what you want. The, uh, the one from, uh, the one from eFoundation is also based off Lineage OS. So I take a modified Lineage OS. It's not Lineage OS, though. It's modified. What I use is not exactly Lineage OS. It's modified. But it's based off that source code. So it's recompiled, modified, uh, so that it's no longer the original Lineage OS to put more security things on it. Suck Zoom. So Lineage OS by itself, unfortunately, doesn't run everything if in its raw form because it doesn't have what is called spoofing. So some apps don't work if you're going to spoof. So Lineage OS is good if you're going to run it with Google, GAPS. But if you're going to run the Google Lineage OS, is not good. You have to modify Lineage OS. That's part of the learning process, guys, that I can't teach you because there's something that I got to learn, you know. So if you're going to use, if you're going to use uh, a Lineage OS, you can't use the standard one. How many of you know that? You cannot use standard Lineage OS because they don't allow spoofing. Okay. You like blackberries because you're from Canada. <laughs> so, anyway, so a uh, uh, lot of knowledge imparted here tonight. A lot of knowledge imparted. This has been uh, hopefully very educational. I know some of you don't want to leave because you have nothing better to do anyway, but I'm telling you. Uh, that uh, people don't like to see the long videos. So they look at my videos and they say, this is too long. But I think the, the, the bulk of it was said in the first hour and a half. <clears throat> so if somebody watched the first hour and a half, they'd get everything. If Zuck uh, summonized Rob to state, would Rob go? So as Kelp knows, when I was doing my, broad my broadcast on Periscope, uh, Zuck actually had a representative watching me every Zucking night. Would watch everything I say on Periscope and then report it to Zuck at the meetings, weekly meetings. So I was actually a discussion point. They actually talked about me at, at Facebook meetings because I was considered the enemy. So fortunately, nobody followed me here on YouTube. I, nobody here acknowledges that they work for because they're not going to go to YouTube. They'd rather be in Facebook Live. Uh, many people go to Los Angeles because they are opportunists. What? Many people go to Los Angeles because they are opportunists. So are you saying that as somebody who lives in Los Angeles, we're all opportunists? That's a pretty interesting comment. Uh, maybe I missed the context here. So uh, hit the uh, like button, guys. To, you know, don't forget to do that. And uh, I'm starting my privacy quest by getting an old school pager. <laughs> if they still work, that would be great. 
maybe you're setting up to be bought out. Uh, by what? I've already open sourced my project, so I, I guess I can't be bought out anymore. I basically killed my, my chances of making money. Don't use my VPN for BitTorrent. My VPN servers were shut down. So all the VPN servers are currently changing. Uh, my West region has been shut down, right? It's been replaced. And, uh, and AMG here has been testing the uh, North, uh, the, uh, the Northeast, the East region. Thank you for testing AMG. So AMG is testing the East region. And that should be up and running tomorrow. And then the last will be South. But it, whatever v, whatever ISP I go to, we can't do illegal downloading, guys. I, if if you want to do illegal downloading, go to some other company or use my Byte Store. I give you Byte Store. I give you Byte Store, and you still don't use it, and you put me at risk. Okay, use Byte Store. I give it to you for free. Okay, if. If you know, and then shut down. If you know, if you don't know how to use BitTorrent, don't even try it because you don't even know how BitTorrent runs. BitTorrent runs in the background. So if you run it and you don't it'll delete it, it keeps running forever. I can't believe that this one person violated. Uh, I got five DMCA notices from one individual. Five. Which obviously means I'm shut down. So it's like Zuck. Five. So. I know. Uh, I know several people who have the virus. And so far they're just isolating. And nothing major is going on. They're not hospitalized or anything. <clears throat> so I don't know anyone who has. There, uh, who is hospitalized for the virus. I don't know anyone. But I do know many who are positive. Not many, but a few. Your Moto phone sounds interesting. Yes, it is. And again, it's very hard to make a living on these phones because I can't ship it to Europe it's, uh, uh, or some parts of Asia. It's very hard to ship the phone. So I go to the... I pack it up, bring it to the post office, and the post office says, well, we're not shipping to that country. So U.S. not a problem, though. So anybody in the U.S. that uh, wants the motor phones, I have them. I have a stock of them, and I can ship it now. Any place in the U.S., regular price, no issues. I also have a bunch of touch with Nexus 5 phones. So that's available as well uh, at various prices for those who want the extra privacy. So all of these are available at my store and, and uh, of course I have my VPN service. And uh, please support me on uh, on Patreon as well, because you know, we all, uh, we, we YouTubers, you know, we don't make money doing this and it's, it's pretty hard to survive doing this. Uh, you can also join me on library, lbry.tv, and follow me there on lbry.tv. And that's been a good place for getting tips on the videos. And in a way, it pays more in, in tips than in advertising money here on YouTube. So, so it, it, at 10 times less views, you know, we get, we get more tips. So it's been, it's been more, uh, profitable to to do it on lbry so lbry uh follow me there if you haven't uh, and follow me on both king sing uh king sing has a little problem with his nexus 5 there's some loose wire in there and affecting his uh his uh microphone i think there are two microphones on there it's probably affecting one of the microphones so Johannes, yes, uh, a bunch of touch phone. Uh, the Nexus 5 is the only one I would recommend right now. And it's the one I, I stocked up on. I don't recommend any other thing at the moment. And 
you know, even if you could get a Pine Phone, the uh, Pine Phone is not really ready yet. So, and you'd have to wait for May to get it, and and then it still wouldn't be running. So you have to probably wait several months if you had a Pine Phone for get, to get it to work. The Nexus 5, you know, is actually completely functional with completely functional power management. All the issues that are existing on a Pine Phone does not exist on an old Nexus 5. So Nexus 5 is already a running uh, phone. So it's something you can do now instead of waiting forever. And then next year you say, okay, what, what do we use? For those of you who are willing to wait in a few months, then you can think about a Pine Phone. I'll have to fact check this further, but I believe Ryzen escaped and will let you bring your unlocked phone to them and they'll give you LTE server. Yes, please fact check that and let me know because there have been kind of a pain on that. I too had a slight symptom of a weird taste buds, but brief, brief, brief itchy throat and my immune system kicked in. They, they say that half the people don't even have any symptoms. Uh, what is linked to your store? Go to brax.me and find me. And then if you go to my profile on brax.me, you'll see my store. It's on my profile. So you go to the brax.me app, and there's a direct link if you want to, you know, remember it. Rob.brax.me will bring you to the app. But you can just download the app and go find me, Rob Braxman, and then uh, I show up. And then you, or you see me someplace over there and you click on my profile and you find the store. By the time we get to 1200 it will be worth 800 <laughs> Yeah, but the price of my product will be the same. Link in the description, yes. Yes, I have tried, I'm using currently Debian Fosh on the Pine Phone. That's the one I'm using a lot. But it's still, uh, you know, it's a lot of instabilities that, it's getting getting there, but still, still not quite. There are twelve thousand cases in LA. I think there are. Uh, no, that's not true. Uh, they've tested. I believe they probably tested uh, over one hundred thousand in in California. So California has twelve thousand cases. They've tested, yeah, over 100,000. It's 90% uh, have, don't have the virus in the test in California. Uh, yeah, I personally don't have a mic issue on a Nexus 5. Uh, and... One of you reported that King Singh did, and I never actually heard that because I've had a lot of Nexus Fives already, and so many of you have a Nexus Five, and I call a ne Nexus Five all the time. I did a lot of calls on it. Okay, doctors are reporting they don't have the test kits. I don't know which doctor you have, but here in California, we're okay. My own uh, health care provider told me that I can get a test if I wanted it. Uh, no, Debian Fosh has, no, it has issues. There's still some issues, but it's, you know, it's getting there. Because I want to start developing software and, and my, my, I want my base to be Debian, Debian Fosh. Because I, I want to work in Debian, so that will be my base model. So I want to like spend a lot of time with Debian Fosh. Uh, you uh, there, there's you didn't you didn't uh, or they didn't they didn't flash the uh, they didn't flash the. Uh, uh, should be been part of their script. You know, the logo is uh, either on the bootloader or on the boot or on the logo.bin. There's several areas in there. Well, this is an older phone, so that's a little bit different structure. But, but there's some other files that didn't get updated. 
in the boot section. Uh, will you co-broadcast in Periscope and Twitch again? I don't know. I don't know if it's profitable to do that. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I don't use, uh, I don't use um, a parrot, but uh, I hear good things about it. But you know, it's not necessarily needed for normal use. It's a little, it's a, those kinds of things like, uh, uh, you know, like cubes and so on, are kind of overkill for the problem. So if you're uh, heavy in cybersecurity and or hacking and you're Snowden, then you may need that. Otherwise, deal with it on the disinformation side. Uh, my Debian Fosh is only a few days old. BC NAS. Yeah, my Debian Fosh model is only a few days old. And they have not worked on the, uh, the uh, power management and the um, GPU they claim that the GPU acceleration is running. It's not accelerating yet. So uh, I, I think the phone works, but the power management is very serious. The uh, Ubuntu Touch one, the, the, main, the Ubuntu Touch is smoother. The graphic acceleration works. The main problem on Ubuntu Touch is the, uh, the date bug and also power management so they have the same issue okay all you have to do is quit bit torrent or stop seeding torrents tell them that that's right jay okay so thank you guys i mean i i did overtime here this three hour broadcast that's a lot that's a lot uh you follow me in library thank you follow me and right you discreetly ship phones you, I, I don't know what discreetly means but I just, you know, it doesn't look like a phone. It's it's kind of flat, depending on the packaging. So it depends. If it's international, it's uh, it's in a flat package. If it's local, it's a priority box. So uh, yeah. So well, it doesn't have to be that that discreet. I don't, there's no secret. You have to declare if there's a lithium ion battery on it. It's a phone. Phone gets sold all the time. Okay. Yes, please thumbs up, guys, if you care. Do do uh, do you care about the video? Please hit thumbs up. If I did a bad job, then don't. Thumbs down. If I if you didn't like what I said, put a thumbs down. If you think that this guy is not trustworthy, then put a thumbs down. It's okay to give any opinion. I don't mind. I'm not gonna hunt you down and say who did that. You know, uh, uh, although if you if you're gonna give me a thumbs down, I would like be interested to know why, so that I can improve myself. If there's something that uh, you know is, uh, can you rate us? No, <laughs> I can't rate you. Did you give me a thumbs up, kelp, or a thumbs down? Do you do that, or you just come and troll? Do you ever do anything positive, Kelp? Do you ever do something to support the channel? Or you only go and say, I'm going to make the cha the broadcaster look bad. Is that, you know? I've never seen you do anything supportive. It's always like, you know, put down, put down. We don't believe in you. You're lying. You just do that. And then you expect them to be, be nice to you. O stream. Okay, so thank you guys, and uh, you can chat among yourselves, I guess, it, it, even though I end the stream, <laughs> the, the chat doesn't stop. So thanks for uh, watching, and again, uh, for those of you on Bytes VPN, the servers have changed, and uh, courtesy of the uh, individual who has uh, been downloading illegal stuff, and so we are now suffering from it, so I now i got to work my weekend building zucking vpn servers so what a waste of time okay thank you so much bye bye good night